food on college football Saturday. Some burgers and some bratwurst. What a gorgeous afternoon. A little chill in the air. You know fall is on the way, and you know the college football season is heating up, especially with this rivalry renewed here in Iowa City. And here come the Iowa Hawkeyes. Over 70,000 on hand here at Kinnick Stadium. The Hawkeyes, 8-4 last year, winners of the Sun Bowl. They won last week as well over Arizona. A lot of people picking them perhaps to win the Big Ten Conference this year. Hi, everybody. I'm Terry Gannon along with my partner, Tim Brandon. Tim, this rivalry began in 1894, but the Hawkeyes have dominated recently. They've won 13 in a row. And after last year's 27-10 win in Ames by Iowa, a number of players from Iowa State said that the string would not continue this year in Iowa City in a marquee matchup in the backfield as well. There's no question about that. I think any time you have a chance to see two Heisman Trophy candidates on the same afternoon, you sit back, you relax, and you just watch these guys work. We're talking about Cedric Shaw and, and Troy Davis, and these are two of the best in the game. Davis, of course, went over 2,000 yards last year. The only college back there on the right, the only college back to go over 2,000 yards in the season and not win the Heisman. He's only 5'8", hides behind those big linemen. Great excitement. Acceleration. Now, the other side, Shaw is five pounds heavier. He's five inches taller. The guy is a power runner. He's got great acceleration. Two tremendous backs. They're quicker than gossip. It's going to be fun. Yeah, it should be great. Number of traditions with this rivalry as well. Yesterday, they began in Ames, Iowa, the 10th annual Army ROTC ball run. That's the game ball. They're running all the way 121 miles and arriving here at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City. All the money going to multiple sclerosis. The Cyclones and the Hawkeyes will have the kickoff when we come back. Well, welcome back to Iowa City, everyone. I'm Lewis Johnson down on the wild and crazy sidelines. Listen, I got to tell you about a conversation I had just a few moments ago with Iowa State coach Dan McCarty. I said, Dan, how do you get your club up to come out, overcome this jinx of 13 years of losing? He said, what jinx? What 13 years? I only know about one loss, the one I coached last year up at Iowa State. So, for him, the main thing he says is this club has to come out and jump on the ball quick. They've got to get something started early to try and spark some of the enthusiasm, some belief that they can somehow come here and beat these Hawkeyes in crazy Kinnick Stadium. Guys, back up to you. All right, Lewis, on the flip side, Hayden Fry said, I don't have any 13-year seniors. Nobody's been here for 13 years. They don't know about that winning streak. They only know the last few years. But he is one of the deans, not only in the Big Ten, but also all over college football, number five in career wins among active coaches, number 10 overall, Tim. Boy, you're right. We enjoyed our visit with him in his 35th year as a college head coach and 18 of them right here in Iowa City. Iowa State won the toss but elected to defer and part of the reason not only the rivalry and the jitters but also maybe sun high bright sky here in iowa city that's tim dwight back at his own goal line trying to find a lane and still up out to the 19 and that's where iowa will start their first offensive series of the ball game and it is raucous already here in kinnick stadium now the man who runs the show for Hayden Fry, Matt Sherman, the junior out of St. Ansgar, Iowa. You look at his numbers last week. 81 yards in the air, but 11 and 4 as a starter. And the, the key for him, Tim, is just to be solid and not turn the ball over throughout the year. Yeah, he does not have to win the game. Just don't lose it for us. He's number five all-time passer at Iowa. He's solid, does not make many mistakes. As a matter of fact, last year, 100 straight passes without an interception. Michael Berger, Cedric Shaw in the backfield. They operate out of the eye. There goes Dwight in motion, and here comes Cedric Shaw, the all-time leading rusher in Iowa history. And a big gain on first down, fighting his way up to the 30-yard line. He should have an Iowa first down. And the chilly starting lineups, the backs and receivers, there's the man, Cedric Shaw. And he is the number one rusher in Iowa history, and a guy who can beat you so many ways with his speed, but also his power. And the thing that stands out about him, as you look at the line, Ross Berber, the guy who leads them and leads the way for Cedric Shaw on that left side, former tight end, is that Shaw is so humble. You know, every time you talk to him, he talks about the team. He doesn't want to even talk about the ice control. Two of the greatest running backs in college football today are on the field, and both guys are that way. They're very quiet leaders. After the first down, here comes Michael Berger to fill back the big hole. And just this caught around the ankles at the 45-yard line. Mike Lynn Cabbage may have saved a touchdown that time. You know, the weakest part of this Iowa team, the Iowa State team, is its defense. Gave up so many points last week, 41 of them. 
James Elmore, maybe the best athlete on this team, at least the defense, though, an inexperienced line up front. Yeah, and they'll move him around, too, Terry. He's the best athlete there, James Elmore. He's 6'2", 220. They'll move him around. He's only a redshirt freshman, but they try to get him in a lot of different places where he can make the plays. So first down at the 44, Iowa moving the ball on this first series. Here comes Shaw to the right side, looking to get outside. Won't get there. Wrapped up in the backfield. That's Derek Clark, the inside linebacker, along with Dewan Anderson. Clark got there first. Yeah, but the play was made on the corner. Elmore and Hudson came they contained they slowed him up they made him string the play out and that allowed Clark to come from behind and make the tackle Derek Clark 6'4 237 pounds and a junior out of Livermore Iowa and a Juco transfer from Waldorf Junior College and a sack and last, last week's game against Wyoming that overtime lost 41 to 38 suffered by the Cyclone And Matt Sherman wants a timeout. He had to take a timeout to save the play. It would have been a penalty for delay of game had he not taken it. And when we come back, it'll be second and 10 at the 44. Iowa on their first drive of the game. Top 10 teams take the field. The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame head deep into the heart of Texas to battle the Longhorns. It's game one of an ABC college football doubleheader next Saturday. Second and almost 11 here at the 43-yard line. As Iowa comes back after calling the timeout, Sherman under center. And the draw goes to Shaw. Trying to bounce outside. Actually, that's Tavian Banks, and he's wrapped up at the 44. Right at the line of scrimmage, he may have lost one. Interesting play, Terry. Second down, and they needed it almost 11 yards. We were up here saying, if you're on defense, you're thinking draw because they want to get uh, things spread out. It's, so defense has to be thinking that, and they were all over. And the entire defense, as you look at Mike Linkavich, who was getting on the stop, went over to talk to Dan McCarney on the sideline. So obviously, he was able to relate his thoughts to the entire defense, not just the captains. How about Mike Linkavich? He's the only only senior on that defense. Third and ten at the 44. Off the play action and out to the fullback Berger. Gets away from one man and has some room, but now knocked out of bounds well short of the first down. Out of the 48-yard line again, Linkavich, along with Dewan Anderson, in on the stop. So an important stop in the first series, the first drive at least, for Iowa State. Hey, partner, there is no question about it. We said at the beginning of the game, Iowa State needed early success. That is paramount. They've got to build confidence. Things have to happen for them to win this game. That is a great defensive series right there. They made the second and long stop come back. They get him in the flats. That's a tremendous defensive stop. And the decision by Dan McCartney to defer after winning the toss, a good one right now. Looks better, doesn't it? Yeah. Nick Gallery in there. All Big Ten punter. An average over 45 yards a punt last year. And there's the brother of Troy Davis. Darren Davis, he can fly as well. Okay, Iowa State has to be very careful now. No mistakes. The four don'ts of the kicking game. Don't let the ball hit the ground. Don't clip. Don't be all sides. Gallery gets it away, but it's a low, short kick. Davis fields at his own 17th. And can't get outside. He actually lost about four yards after fielding that punt. Down at the 14, maybe the 15-yard line, Ryan Lofton, a defensive end, in there on the stop. So a punt of 34 yards, and Davis lost three on the return. Now Todd Doxson, a senior out of Omaha, Nebraska, the man who leads the way in a great day last week in the loss to Wyoming. Career day, 17 out of 22 for over 220 yards, almost 225 yards and a touchdown. And a guy who not only can throw the football, but is very dangerous on the run. No huddle, a lot of shifting. Commentator and Troy Davis in the backfield with the offset eye, and here comes Troy. A big game across the 20 out to the 23 yard line and a look at some of the power of Troy Davis. Boy, you saw everything there, the whole package, the explosion, the way he got through, the acceleration, then the power. Chili's starting lineups, the offensive backs and receivers, of course, the man who you have to talk about, Troy Davis. As you mentioned, the only guy to go over 2,000 yards in a season and not win the Heisman Trophy. And that was after getting about 187 yards his first year. Patrick Anoffa, a 335-pound center leading the way. Big offensive line, averages just under 300 pounds. A gain of eight for Davis on first down, so it's second and two at the 23. And give to the up back. That's his brother Darren, caught right at the line of scrimmage. The defensive front for Iowa 
Jared DeFries, only a sophomore, but really a leader. Had 12 sacks a year ago, tied with Bill Ennis Inge for third in the Big Ten in that category. And Vernon Rollins and Matt Hughes, the linebackers, trying to replace Bobby Diaco and Plez Atkins had six interceptions last year. Number one of the Big Ten. Third down and two coming up for Iowa State. And I think also important to me for them not only to get a stop on that last drive, but also to, to get a couple of first downs early here, too, to get some confidence offensively. Four receivers set. Davis the lone setback. Straight drop. Dotson and one's batted down at the line of scrimmage. Bill Ennis Inge tipped that one at the line of scrimmage. The big 6'5", 245-pound senior out of Kirkwood, Missouri. I think in a situation like this, they want the three-step drop and release it. Well, he does that, but when Doxon does, he throws, instead of through an alley, through a crease, he throws it right into the defense. The guy in his inch, as you mentioned, is 6'5". Watch him get the big paw on it, and here's the end of it, almost intercepted. Good play that time by uh, Rayfelt to knock it down. Mark Harris, a punter, and a good one back for Iowa State. This one off the side of his foot, though. And Dwight sees Tavian Banks field it at the 35. And down at the 39-yard line after slipping. A punt of 42 yards after the fortunate bounce. And a return of four. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by the new Dodge. We're thinking ahead. Kellogg's with good taste, nutrition, and value. The best to you each morning from Kellogg's. Miller Lite. When you've got the great taste of an ice-cold Miller Lite, life is good. And Chili's Grill and Bar, home of the Big Mouth Burgers. About 64 degrees at game time here in Iowa City. Gorgeous afternoon for college football. From the 40 to give to Michael Berger, the fullback, who had a first gain on the first drive. The game for Iowa, out to the 44, stopped by Kevin Hudson, the cornerback. Berger, 6'3", 229-pound sophomore out of Harlan, Iowa. You know, all the fullbacks for Iowa are big. you got Berger at 230, you got Grandquist at 230. Filer's big. Filer's about 225, 230. Yeah. I think that surprised the defense that time. They came to the up back instead of going to Shaw, a quick opener. Now, Shaw, the only setback. And he's going to get it straight ahead, nowhere to go. He falls ahead for a yard, maybe, but stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Phil Marceau in there on the stop, along with Greg Schoen. Take a look at this. They're going to follow Verba. Big old number 73, 76 there. You see his uh, Reichel, but he never even gets up to the offensive lineman. See, he draws a crowd. As soon as they come, they're trying to shade a little bit, play to the outside. They're trying to get some pressure, get that penetration. They feel like if they can get Shaw before he gets started, they've got him stopped. Seven new starters on defense for Iowa State this year, and that's a defense that was last in the country against the run last year. And last in the Big Eight. He nailed about 37 points a game. They just do get this play off. Kim Dwight with a leaping catch across midfield. He has a first down. Dewan Anderson on the coverage. But here's a guy in Tim Dwight who is only 5'9", 190 pounds. Maybe the smallest starting receiver in the Big Ten. A look at some of his leaps, though. The guy's got a huge heart. You know, that play was set up by the offensive line. They gave Sherman a lot of protection. He drilled it a little bit high. That's what the leap that you're talking about. Dwight went up to get it. But boy, did he have time. You think Dwight's not a celebrity in this town? They say when he walks down the street, if he walked with Hayden Fry, they'd come up and ask for Dwight's autograph rather than Hayden's. Yeah, but the person who said that wouldn't go on record as saying it. <laughs> and we weren't supposed to say it. <laughs> First down at the 47 of Iowa State, trimming the throw again. And that's his tight end, Chris Knipper. Gets to the 42-yard line. Knipper trying to replace, of course, a duo that was something special here at Iowa. Scott Slutsker, who is with the Indianapolis Colts. Derek Price now with the Lions. And it's not often you have two tight ends make it in the NFL from the same team. But you know what? As you look at Knipper, who was shaken up, they've had some tremendous tight ends here at Iowa. I mean, Marv Cook and Jonathan Hayes. As you mentioned last year, of course, they had uh, Mr. Price. All NFL guys. Yep. Man, a good sign. Knipper able to run off the field as you look at some of the scores and matchups across the country. Big day of college football. Zeron Flemister, redshirt freshman out of Sioux City, now in for Chris Knipper at tight end. And now they 
Split the backs in the backfield. Berger and Shaw. And the ball is on the ground. Did he get it back? It looked like Sherman got it back. He did. And that's exactly what you talked about earlier, Timmy, the fact that Sherman, above everything else, has to take care of the football for Iowa this year. Well, a lot of people feel that if Iowa turns the ball over today, that Iowa State can get them, can upset them. But I think that has to happen. Now, here, Sherman put the ball on the ground. He got it back. But uh, they do not want to turn that ball over. Normally, it's Iowa that's taking the ball away. They're always in the uh, turnover margin. They're always in the positive side. Lost well, five turnovers last week against Arizona in a one-point win. In fact, all 21 points came off of the turnover. Third and seven at the 44 now for the Hawkeyes. The play action on the roll. Sherman, he's got a man out at the 38-yard line. A little bit short of the first down, though, it looks like. That's Damon Gibson, the junior out of Houston. And we'll see. Now he's about a half a yard short. Boy, I'd go for it here. They get a good push. The receiver has got to know where the first down markers are. Instead, look, comes up a yard short, and that's where Tracy Williams, who makes a tremendous break in the ball, makes the stop. But he's got to know where that first down marker is. Now, early in the ball game, you've got fourth and one. Do you go for it? I say absolutely. Set the pace right now. Set the tone. You've got the offensive line to do it. You're supposed to be favored in this ball game. It's in your house. Go for it. Aiden Fry agrees with you. You've got Berger and Shaw in the backfield. The give to Berger, flags on the play. He got back to the line of scrimmage and may have fought for the first down, but we got flags now. It's going to be motion against Iowa. There's the mistake we said Iowa could not make. Mm -hmm. If they hurt themselves today, then look out. They had third and about a yard. In fact, less than a yard. And elect to gamble, but... Now, the defense has the option to go ahead and have the measurement before they decide what's going to take place. They have to know their options, and to do that, you've got to find out, did he, in fact, get the first down? If he didn't get the first down, they'll say, forget the penalty. We'll take it right here. Absolutely. It's about the third time the play clock was running down, too, before they got that snap off. All right, he got the first, so let's go ahead and let's take the penalty and let's move Iowa back. Fourth down. The replay fourth. And that changes, obviously, what you're going to do offensively. Dan McCarney, back in his hometown of Iowa City. He's an offensive lineman here at Iowa and coached on this staff. And now, of course, in his second year in Ames. He's got to think of a way to start getting some pressure on the uh, kicker. Of course, that penalty there takes him out of the, uh, the go-for distance. And so they'll punt it. Gallery on for his second punt of the afternoon. Michael and Cabbage back deep at his own 10. This one an end over end punt, and that's a short one. It looked like that one off the side of his foot. They're walking up outside the 20, about the 22 yard line. Iowa State takes over there. We take it back to 19. 77 after a 43 year layoff Iowa State and Iowa resumed their heated rivalry and Dennis Mosley will take it all the way 77 yards to score in the 12 to 10 Iowa victory one of the countless memorable plays in this rivalry that started in 1894 let's go down to Lewis Johnson for more Terry yet yeah. Now we'll keep it up here. First and 10 at the 22. Iowa State starting on their second drive of the game. Doxon on the run. He can run, but he slides down and Bill Anna James makes sure he stays there at the 22. And let's go quickly down to Lewis Johnson for more on this rivalry. Yeah, Terry, 43 years is a long time for these two schools not to play. And they stopped because of some ill feelings between the two universities. But get this, it took an act of the Iowa State legislature to get them back together back in 1977. And who won the first game? It was the Hawkeyes, 12 to 10 over the Cyclones. Back to you. You know, that wasn't the first time they suspended play. 1908 as a result of a controversial play that took place in 1907. They said, no, we're not playing it. So they stopped it. Did you well, they also stopped the run of Doxon behind the line of scrimmage. Jared DeFries was in there quickly. Here's a guy who was a high school running back, Timmy, and he gained about 55 pounds as you look at Michigan. 
up early, 3-0 on Colorado. The Hail Mary game revisited two years later. But DeVries, a guy who went about, oh, 205, 210 in high school, was a running back in Athlington, Iowa. And now he goes about 260. Third and 13 as Dotson wants to change the play at the line of scrimmage. Four receivers set. Straight drop. And overthrows his intended receiver. That was Ed Williams. It'll bring up fourth down. Very quickly, let's go up to John Saunders in New York. John? All right, John, last week I was at the Duke-Florida State game. Duke defense pretty good, but giving up that touchdown to the Wildcats. Flags on this play. In fact, they blow it dead before Mark Harris could get the punt off. Well, there's a lot of whooping going on down there, a lot of jawing by both clubs. On the last offensive play, Iowa State thought that they were interfered with. Now they come back here, and you've got uh, motion, illegal movement. A lot of mistakes early on. Dan McCartney's going to, he's just frustrated right now. And now you send Mark Harris back to his own goal line. He had three punts last week, 43-yard average. He needs to boom one out of here now, and they've got to cover. Yeah, Dwight's and Dwight and Banks back at the 40-yard line of Iowa. And they can hurt you. Yep. This is a low line drive kick. Pretty good one, though. It sends Dwight all the way back to his own 26. And down he goes at the 39. They did both. He got a great kick, and they covered well. Right about where he was awaiting that kick, a punt of 48 yards, a return of nine. Well, Monday night, Al Michaels hosts an action-packed, heart-stopping primetime special, showcasing the greatest sport moments of all time. And then Jim Kelly and the Buffalo Bills travel to Three Rivers Stadium to avenge last year's playoff loss against the AFC champion Pittsburgh Steelers on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. That's all Monday night, right here on ABC. Should be a great show. That'd be a lot of fun to see. I mean, greatest sports moments of all time. Never forget the night Cal Ripken broke the record. It was one of the most emotional nights in sports I think I've ever seen. First down for Iowa at the 39. Sherman to throw. Overthrows the intended receiver. That was Demo Odoms, and he was open at the 40. Boy, was he ever. I mean, he, Kevin Hudson was still backpedaling at the 35. Never did make a break. Now, the field is a little bit soft. Cleats are not catching. Now watch. See, he's playing soft anyway. He starts to backpedal before the snap. All right, number 13 is Hudson. Watch. Gets turned, stops. Now watch. When he starts to come back, he's got the cushion already. He can't make up. If the ball's well thrown, it's complete. You know, we've seen a couple of guys slip on this turf, too, and you look down at it, and it doesn't look in great shape for this early in the season. No, it's soft, and guys were slipping in uh, pregame warm-ups. So it's second and 10 at the 39. Running the throw again, complete at the 44, but that's about it. Wrapped up right there at the 44 is Damon Gibson. I'll tell you what, this young defense of Iowa State has come to play in a hungry way today. They, they have been all over that offense of Iowa so far. And that's, that's been the big question mark, Timmy. Well, that's, that's one thing that Dan McCartney wanted to turn around. The defense ranked last in the Big 8 last year, among the worst in the country. They gave up, as we said earlier, 37 points a game. Last week, they gave up 41. The deepest Iowa penetration has been down to the Iowa State 38, but the good news is for Iowa State fans, no points on the board. Cedric Shaw, the lone setback right now, on third and fourth of 45. Play action. And complete. And the ball is on the ground after the catch. Iowa State has the football. The catch was made by Zeron Flemister. And yeah, he was hit hard by Dewan Anderson. Dewan Anderson timed it perfectly. It's the shot you dream about as a cornerback. Before the receiver can even turn his head, you've got the lick on it. All right, now he gets a good cushion. Here comes the tight end, number 80. That's Flemister. Good pass, but watch. He's still looking back. Now out of the right-hand corner of your screen, here comes Anderson. Boom! And knocks it loose before the receiver, Flemister, can even turn his head. That's a great hit. Mm. Great coverage. And Iowa State has now forced the turnover that we talked about. Now just watch his head. It hadn't even completely turned around when the hit from Anderson comes in and dislodges the football. And Derek Clark came up with it. So Iowa State takes over after the turnover, the turnover that they needed. They came in talking about the fact that they needed a little bit of help, forcing some turnovers. And now they take over at the 47-yard line. Straight drop for Doxy. Throws out to Ed Williams, but he won't go anywhere. Right at the line of scrimmage. 
And he is wrapped up as soon as he catches the ball by Kerry Cooks, the strong safety. Gain of about a foot, dangerous pass. Eddie Williams, though, is an all-conference type guy. He's a big receiver, 6'3", 200-pounder. They like to use him. He's a marquee player, and obviously he's, he's the kind of kid that can break one for you. Had seven catches a week ago, 46 last year, so he can, he can get it done. Second and 10 after the completion, though. Only six yards of offense so far for the Cyclone. Changing that, but this one's tipped and could have been picked off again. The second time that's happened. You know what about that graphic, though, is the fact that that means absolutely nothing. What counts is what's on that scoreboard, and it's still goose egg, goose egg. Third down, 10 from the 47. Kansas State with the big lead playing against Cincinnati. We saw them a couple of weeks ago against Texas Tech. And Michigan in that field goal lead over Colorado. Doxon now just one for four, Terry, one yard. He's got to, uh, he's got to get some help. He's being rushed on the throws. They aren't throwing deep patterns. He's had two tipped and now flags come down. So it's been a struggle offensively for the Cyclones so far. This is going to be an illegal substitution and Doxon's saying, hey, why? Todd Doxon says, why? What, what are you talking about here as far as illegal substitution? He still had 10 on the play clock. John Laurie and his crew. Microphone obviously not working. They had a substitution infraction. Yeah. Twelve guys in the huddle, Timmy, you're right. So that backs them up even further. It's third and 15 now in the 42. Mistakes that they can ill afford to make. Yeah, but Doxon's saying to the official, hey, what the heck, we're playing Iowa. We need 12 guys. <laughs> yeah, but they're in Iowa City. So third and long. On the roll is Doxon. Looking. Flips it out complete at midfield. Finally got rid of that one. And so there is Damon Green. But they are well short of the first down. They needed 15 on the play. And they gained about nine. You know, they, they rolled him out to buy him some more time. He actually had more time, but watch what happens in the, in the secondary. They're in a zone coverage. They've got a man free back here. It's just kind of hiding back there in the zone. Everybody's perfectly covered. There is absolutely nowhere for him to go until he actually penetrates the line of scrimmage. And when he gets up there, they force the run, and he just dropped it over. Not nearly enough for the first. Four punts last week for Harris. Three already today. And this one's going to be boomed all the way to the end zone. A 49-yard punt. He would have rather had a few of those yards back, though. They'll bring it out to the 20. Well, tomorrow night on ABC, it starts with an hour of America's Funniest Home Videos. Then Sandra Bullock, Demi Moore, and Courtney Love, guest on the Barbara Walters special. And Denzel Washington and Emmy winner John Lithgow star in the Sunday night movie Ricochet. And it's all tomorrow night right here on ABC. Not even the mascots going at it. It's Herky, Hawkeye, and Cy the Cardinal. You know your mascots. Oh, absolutely. Iowa trying to get something started offensively. They turned it over on the fumble by Plumas to the last time. Here is Cedric Shaw fighting his way up to about the 23-yard line. He was pretty well contained for most of the, the game last week. But he's the kind of guy who can bust out at any moment. Terry, we talked about Shaw. We talked about Davis. Both guys, Heisman Trophy candidates. If you look at Shaw right now, he's got uh, four carries, 14 yards today. You see what he did last week. Troy Davis, one carry, eight yards. Mm -hmm. So Shaw's got the, uh, the upper hand early so far. Second and seven. Here comes Shaw again, looking for a lane. Not going to find one. Wrapped up after a gain of maybe one. Michael and Cabbage in there again. We've called his name already about four or five times. He has been active early. And Cabbage, the number two tackler of a year ago, and 109 tackles. Terry, if you look what's taking place today, I mean, so far, Iowa State has let them pick up a little bit of yardage, and they've moved it all the way down to the 38, but they still have not scored. When you look at what happened last week, six drives, four touchdowns, a punt, a field goal try, so they were very successful last week, really struggling now. This is what we were just talking about. 
Neither runner having tremendous success yet. Third and five at the 25. Play action. Thrown under pressure, and down he goes. At the 15-yard line, Rudy Ruffalo. In there with the sack. And, Timmy, I got to tell you, Dan McCartney has got to be absolutely overjoyed by what his defense has done so far. Yeah, but watch this. Old big old Rudy gets to him. He almost had a sack earlier. But watch, we talked about the footing. All right, he goes and drops back. Sherman, his back foot, his plant foot actually slipped from under him. But Rudy was right there, touched him down, tagged him down. And, yeah, they're going to have to get rid of it again. Gallery's punt barely gets it off. There's some contact, too. Naren Davis backed up with a fair catch at the 41 yard line a little bit of action back up field too it's going to be some of the best field position that iowa state's had yet they're up near midfield now 44 yard punt but with a fair catch they are right at the 41 yard line great field position to start this series there's gallery's punt watch what happens afterward now oh. it's a, the officials will look at that and say, hey, that's incidental contact. There's no harm. But then there's <laughs> a lot sure of frustration. Well, I said no harm, but a lot of frustration. Dewan Anderson was trying to ride the shoulder pads of Gallery after that punt. They split the eye again. And here's Troy Davis, barely kept his feet. And wrapped up at the line of scrimmage by a host of tackles. And Tim Davis almost went down before he got to the line of scrimmage. Only his balance kept him up, but a number of people slipping on this turf so far. But Damian Robinson just didn't want to let him get away. Look at this. Now, I'm going to tell you, there's hitting going on all over this field. That's Tyrone Watley. He's being covered out there by Plez Atkins. And they're just bumping and grinding. And then look what happens up front. The slip, boom, the uh, balance. And then all of a sudden, here comes Damian. And Damian Robinson, number three, the, the safety just doesn't want to let him go. They rode him back 10 yards. Get the feeling these two don't like each other very much. <laughs> now, flags again. We've seen a lot of those early on, too. And some more extracurricular at the line of scrimmage. Second and nine, and we'll sort this out. Defense offside. Five yard penalty. <laughs> Aaron Klein. Sophomore out of Appleton, Wisconsin, offsides. And neither team, I think, playing except for the Iowa State defense so far, like the coaches wanted them to come into this game. Mistakes on both sides. Mike Davis trying to get outside, not going to get there. Again, no yards. Terry, listen to this. Iowa State, eight yards by Davis on their very first play. They've got 12 total. That's it. 12 total yards. Iowa, 24 yards on the first two plays. They've got 48 total. So right now, mm. it's a defensive ball game and a game we came in thinking would be a high-scoring contest. Yep. Vernon Rollins met Troy Davis head-on that time. Rollins, a guy who the coaches point to to try to replace Bobby Diaco, who is now a graduate assistant, leading tackler the last couple of years for the Hawkeyes. And Rollins certainly has the ability to do it. The speed, he's 6'3", 235. See if Dan McCarney this time tries to spread them thin a little bit. Use a lot of the field. Third and six for the Cyclones. In motion is green. On the roll is Doxy. And almost picked off. And then almost caught. Les Atkins on the coverage, and he almost had the interception. And let's go down to Lewis Johnson right go, now. Zach, Lewis. Go do it. Guys, you notice the activity down on the field. Uh, just a few moments ago, the referee called a timeout. And what he was doing was warning both clubs about their activity, the pushing and shoving after the plays. The next thing you'll see is you'll see some flags coming up, five, ten-yard penalties. The heat is really hot out there. I tell you what, the emotions are flying. Back to you. Lewis, no surprise. Uh, this has been a series that's been heated, even though Iowa has won 13 in a row. Look at Tim Dwight back at his own 10-yard line, awaiting the fourth punt of the afternoon for Mark Harris. This is a high, short punt. But it takes an Iowa State bounce, and this is going to roll down almost to the 10-yard line. It's down at the 11. 
in the battle of the kicking game, Iowa State is now starting to win, and they're starting to pick up better field position. You saw the last drive start at the 41. Now they're going to move Iowa all the way back inside the 15 to the 11. So the kicking game itself has been a huge factor thus far, especially for Iowa State. 44-yard punt from Harris that time. So Iowa trying to do something offensively. They have not been able to kickstart their offense so far, and a lot of that due to the Cyclone defense. But Hayden Fry, you know, he talked about it. Last week, they played Arizona, and it was a defense, a double eagle defense, which is very unique in college football, what Arizona does. And Iowa State with the same type of look. They've taken a lot from the pages of Arizona's playbook. Baby and Banks with a lot of room outside. Now, touchdown. Cross the 40, he's got a chance to go. Can they catch him? Inside the 10, touchdown Banks. An 89-yard run to the end zone. feeling that Hayden Fry was going to try to do something just to wake his ball club up. I was looking for the pass. Instead, they came with the wide opener. Boy, you got some great blocking, not only up front, but on the corners. Once he broke into the secondary, still had blockers all the way up near midfield. Tavian Banks with a great deal of speed. 5'11", 190 pounder at 45 yards last week. Boy, once he broke it, they weren't going to catch him. Hayden Fry says this is the best two deep backfield he's ever had here at Iowa. And Tavian Banks gave you a reason why. That Grummer on for the extra point and just does get it to kick inside. There's a penalty, though, against Iowa State. It's going to be offsides. I'm one of these guys that believes once it's on the board, leave it up there, but we'll see what the penalty is. If it's offsides, half the distance. Driscoll, the backup quarterback. Just decline it. Yep. And what they'll no, do is it'll, it'll, it'll be accepted kickoff. on the kickoff. That's right. Watch this hole open up. Now watch Tavian Banks come back. Gets a block there. Now watch the cutback left. Now in the secondary, you're getting blocking. Now out of your screen, you're going to see number six, Tim Dwight, throw a block up near midfield. Banks then is behind everybody. He's saying, if I'm even, I'm leaving. He's gone. See you later. And you Banks know, all the way to the house. That is a just a wake-up call for Iowa. And you know who threw the key block early on? Cedric Shaw for his mate in the backfield. Banks with an 89-yard touchdown run to get the Hawkeyes on the board. When people talk about the Heisman Trophy, they think about touchdowns and yardage. Watch number five, bottom right-hand corner of your screen. That's Cedric Shaw, Heisman candidate. Watch what he does for Banks. Boom, throws the key block right there, and that allows Banks to take it to the house. The longest run since 1972 at this school. It's the fourth longest ever. And it won't show up in any uh, record book, uh, the block by Cedric Shaw, or in the stats, as everyone looks to those for the Heisman Trophy uh, uh, at the end of the year. But that's that's a big-time play by a guy for a player who's in the backfield along with him. Terry, it's just a huge play. Terry, he's the full package. I mean, he's one of the best running backs in college football. He does everything you ask of a running back, including blocking, and he loves to play the game. Very quiet, humble guy that loves it. So the penalty on the point after try assessed on the kickoff here. So Iowa able to kick off from their own 40-yard line. Ryan Hurley, the long kicker. He takes long field goals for Iowa in there to handle those duties here. And Troy Davis back at his own goal line awaiting this kick for the Cyclone. sputtered throughout the entire first quarter until that one play by Tavian Banks. Davis back deep in his own end zone. This one almost goes through the upright. And they'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. So the second quarter has begun here in Iowa City at Kinnick Stadium, over 70,000 on hand. Terry Gannon, Tim Brandt, and Lewis Johnson on a beautiful afternoon about 65 degrees. This heated robbery has been heated so far. A lot of skirmishes on the field in the first quarter, but Iowa with the 7-0 lead. The Iowa State defense, though, 
played awfully well in that first quarter. The offense, on the other hand, has yet to really get it going. Great scene for college football. More than 70,000 here, as you said, on a good day. The bad news is that the field is a little bit slick. See some players starting to slip, and quarterbacks having trouble with the plant foot setting up. First down at the 20 here is Davis into the line. And he really hasn't been able to get anything going. That Iowa defensive front has been able to bottle him up. John LaFleur in on the tackle that time. You know, I think they're going to just start banging him, though. They're going to try to wear down Iowa. This is an offensive line that averages about 300 pounds. And, you know, last year, Sporting News called Iowa's, uh, or Iowa State's offensive line a mess. That gave motivation. And next thing you know, Davis has 2,000 yards. So I think they may start just start playing off of that. Use these big guys and firing out and let Davis just work and try to find his holes. Young man who was so homesick, he called he wanted to go home the first week. Ian Ames. Not anymore. And he's stood up right at the line of scrimmage. LaFleur again this time with a lot of flair. No chance for Davis to go anywhere. Boy, John LaFleur. Now last year he started. Didn't start this year, but watch him come up and meet him. Tucks that tail, comes up, gets all the power behind him. He's 6'3", 275 pounds, and takes the little guy, 5'8", Davis, down to the ground. You know, LaFleur's dad play here. He was a starter here. Yeah, back in the 70s. Look at what they've done on third down. This is third and eight here. Davis, the lone back. And the play action. Dotson scrambling. Still doesn't have a man. And run out of bounds at the 26-yard line. Good coverage in the secondary. Never had a man open. And good containment by Iowa. They strung it out. They were going to let him get to the corner, but they weren't going to let him get the first down. I mean, let him pick up two or three. They were worried about that coming in. They had all their bases covered that time. Vernon Rollins just chased him out, did a great job, stuck with him. So back again is Mark Harris, his fifth one of the afternoon. But look at the average so far. Almost 49 yards. And Dwight back at his own 25-yard line, along with Banks. The short punt bounces. And dangerous. The Iowa deep men not getting away from it right away. A punt of 42 yards, no return. And the ball at the 33. You know, one of the great things about this matchup and this rivalry is that you got Cyclone fans living in Iowa City, vice versa, and aimed all around the state. They live next door to each other, and uh, bragging rights be the entire year if you, you win this one. Sherman to Dima Autumn. Out across midfield and into Cyclone territory. A gain of 19 on first down. Iowa comes out throwing this time. Boy, I tell you, that was a great throw. He threw that before Odom's even made his break. Just perfectly thrown. Longest pass of the game. If they continue to move the ball, it could be a long afternoon for Iowa State, a club which has no first downs on five possessions. Pretty good completion rate for Sherman, huh? Seven out of eight, 57 yards. Of course, the big play from scrimmage, the 89-yard touchdown run by Tavian Banks. To put Iowa on the board, that's the only scoring in the ballgame so far. Here's Shaw getting to the outside. Cutting back up to the 40-yard line and inside the 40 down to the 39. He needs to get to about the 37 for a first down, a gain of eight. Once you get that passing game going and they respect Sherman and they start backing off Dwight and Odoms on the corners, that's going to open things up for Cedric Shaw. We've already seen it. Now you mentioned his numbers by Sherman. He's having a pretty good day. He's a guy that has good touch, and right now he is definitely in rhythm, and that's just going to make things that much easier for Shaw. 24 yards on the afternoon for Shaw. On the other side, Troy Davis only nine yards on five carries this afternoon for Iowa State. Here comes Shaw again. Still up. Look at it. He's got a lane. And just tripped up inside the 15 at the 13 by Kevin Hudson. He saved a touchdown. That's just poor tackling. Right now, Cedric Shaw is frustrated. 
he is really frustrated that he didn't take it all the way to the end zone. He thought he had broken free and got caught from behind. Look at him shake his head. This is poor tackling by Iowa State. They've got him. All right, now wrap him up. You can't give away the outside leverage. Look for him to come back. They don't do that. Once he gets through here, now it's speed. He'll break a couple tackles. Now look at this strength. Now this is where he thought he was gone. Got tripped up from behind, and I mean he's upset with himself. At that point, he should have just been high-stepping, kept his heels and Achilles in front of the guy behind him. He's special. Cedric Shaw, what a running back. Mm. First down at the 13th. Roger and Banks in the backfield in the eye now. Here comes Tavian Banks. A lot of room to the end zone. Second touchdown of the afternoon for Banks. He ought to go over and shake Shaw's hand. Shaw allowed him to get his second touchdown of the day. He gave him the block on the first one. Took himself out on this one. 12-yard touchdown run by Tavian Banks. Boy, first of all, look at the right side of the line. Rose, McKinney, those guys just opening up a huge hole. And then Tavian Banks right up the middle. Looked like a little trap. Just exploded through there. Tavian Banks with his second touchdown in the afternoon. Man, Shaw threw the, the block to free him on the first one. That was winded on this one. Took himself out. Gets him down to the 12-yard line. Robert on for the extra point. And that is good. So on two Tavian Banks touchdown runs, the first one of 89 yards, the second one of 12, the Hawkeyes have the two touchdown lead here in the second. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. And Domino's Pizza, who introduces their newest crust sensation, Roma Herb Crust Pizza. Mm. Well, it's been the Tavian Banks show so far here this afternoon. The two touchdown runs by the junior out of Bettendorf, Iowa, and Ryan Hurley again on to handle the kicking duties. Roy Davis back at his own goal line. Iowa's so strong that Iowa State now has to make something happen or they can get embarrassed here. Davis up to his eight. This is Davis. Looking for a lane. Staying on his feet. What a run back. Out to the 35. It looked like he was caught back at the 15 or 16. Talk about balance. Well, next Saturday on ABC Sports, our college football doubleheader begins at noon Eastern when ninth ranked Notre Dame takes on number seven, Texas. And then at 3.30 Eastern, Boston College battles 11 ranked Michigan. A lot of games on pay-per-view as well, so check with your local cable operator for those games next Saturday on ABC Sports. Georgia Tech, North Carolina. Carolina 2-0 and looking awfully good in the ACC so far. Here comes Pro Davis, near side, wrapped up at the 38-yard line, and here's a flag. Might John, be a face mask. I think John Ortlieb got in there to make the tackle. You know, Iowa State had eight yards on its first play, and until that one right there, they had 10 yards on 14 plays. So they're not getting much offense. It is a face mask. That's a break for Iowa State. This guy's got such great balance. He's got that low center of gravity. He's only five foot eight. Now watch. Here comes the hand up top. And any time it scrapes up there, even if you're wrapped and your hand's not closed down on that face mask, they've got to call that. Now that's incidental. Incidental. That's not flagrant. But still, it's a penalty. Never fault a, a guy, though, like Ortley for making that tackle up high. You know, when you think about it, Ortley's so big, Davis so little, he couldn't help but reach for his head. Oh, yeah. missed it. <laughs> there is Davis across, and he gets the first down, so they'll move the chains. And let's go up to New York very quickly for an update on Colorado, Michigan from John Saunders. John? John, it should be a good one all afternoon long. First down here for the Cyclones at the 46 after the carry by Davis. Here comes Troy again with a hole. Inside the 40 to the 39 in the quick hitting style of Troy Davis. Boy, he got to the line of scrimmage in a hurry. Got a big hole up there, too, from Ray Felton uh, and Alpha. Two guys open it up. If you give him just that little bit of crease, he's got that acceleration. Now watch this hole open. This is ground level, perfect view of what's taking place. You just give him that little crease, and he's got that acceleration to get through. Hides behind those big guys so so well. Davis just 5'8", and you look at Ray Felt and, and Alpha. Both guys are over 6'2", 6'3". Over 2,000 yards last year. Did not win the Heisman Trophy. The only man in history to do that. 
finished fifth in the balloting. Carries again down to the 33. Boy, he's a talent, isn't he? Uncanny ability to find the hole. He finished in the top five, as we said last year, in the balloting. Hardest working big star I think you will ever see. He and just works all the time on his game and his body. And when you talk to coaches around the country, not just at Iowa State, they say the, the great thing about Troy Davis is his vision. He's got better vision than, than most they've ever seen. And, and Dan McCartney would agree. See, I, I Never seems to make a wrong cut and yeah, a wrong read. I would use a better, a different word for that. I don't know a better word, but a different word. I would say is instincts. He's got uncanny instincts. Second and four. Here comes Troy Davis again. And hit after about a yard, maybe two, down to the 30. Should be about a yard and a half short. Good hit by Damian Robinson, the free safety. Damian Robinson in the free safety position has been having some hard hits all day. This time it's helmet to helmet. Just slides off. Well, he's got to be careful. He's got to pull that neck or you're going to lose some vertebrae in the back of that neck. He's a tough, hard-hitting, strong uh, free safety. He's active. He's aggressive. Third leading tackler last year on the defense. Third and about a yard. And a mix up in the backfield and here come the flags. Well, we have seen that four or five times this afternoon I'm still trying to figure out what the heck was going on and that when they had the tight end then they took him off the line then he went in motion but he he went in motion wasn't set long enough number of false starts as a matter of fact well that's right now the motion starts but even the center watching off he hesitated <laughs> a little bit everybody starts to move and it's like he brought it back halfway Dox and stopped Doxon saying where is it come on get it up here Patrick Anuffa, 6'2", 335 pounds. He was born in Anchorage, Alaska. And he is a load leading the way in the middle. Yeah, junior college transfer, Big 8 Conference Newcomer of the Year last year. One of the best centers in the country. So don't get angry with us, Patrick. We're just showing what happened that play. It was Tim Grant who said that. <laughs> Third and six. Up the sideline to Watley, and that one's thrown into the crowd. And a push from Watley, plus Atkins was there covering it. Yeah, but Atkins pushed him first. I mean, it's always the guy that does second that gets caught. That's the one you catch. No flags thrown. Good officiating that time. Good no call. So it's been a struggle for Iowa State offensively. Mark Harris on for his sixth punt of the afternoon. They're in that area, though, where you have to be watching for the fake. Fake punt here wouldn't hurt him. There's Dwight back at his own tent. Harris punts it away. And that one's going to get to the end zone. A punt of 35 yards, but he didn't hit the corner. Ah, they really only pick up 15 yards on that because now it comes all the way back up to the 20. Yep. Well, tomorrow at 3 Eastern, 2 Central, and Pacific on ABC Sports, Robbie Gordon and 11 of the world's top drivers meet in Michigan to take the final challenge of the International Race of Champions. Then at 4 Eastern, 3 Central, and Pacific, Ari Leyendijk and the stars of the Indy Racing League Roll the dice in the desert at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. That's all tomorrow on ABC Sports. Some racing coming your way. So first down at the 20. And here comes Cedric Shaw back in there. Still up. And across the 30 may have a first down for Iowa. And let's go up again to John Saunders and update on Northwestern and Duke. John, what do you have? All right, John, so Northwestern with the loss last week to Wake Forest, another ACC opponent, and that's a quarterback doing some damage against them. Here comes Shaw, sidestepping tackler. Out to the 44-yard line and another Iowa first down. Two carries, two first downs for Shaw, who now is starting to explode. 6'1", 195 pounds. He's got that good speed. He's got that good body. Going to take himself out, though, again. That's dangerous that with Tavian Banks. Don't Tavian. do that, Cedric. No, Tavian Banks comes in, <laughs> and he's been explosive when he comes in. Boy, Look at these numbers. 184 yards on the ground already here in the first half. Wow. Of course, 89 of those on the touchdown run by Tavian Banks. Randquist now in that fullback along with Banks. Here comes Banks. Found the lane to the outside. Has another first down. I'll tell you what. 
I don't know how he got through there, but he is on fire this afternoon. You know, it's one of those deals where Cedric better say, I don't want to come out the rest of the afternoon because every time he comes out, Tavian just explodes. Talk about some talented running backs here, folks. Washington up two touchdowns on BYU, and look what Auburn did to Ole Miss. You know what's interesting? You look at this Iowa football team, and it is strong, and a lot of people picked it to win the conference. Eight players on the two-deep roster are former walk-ons. Mm -hmm. That's been a solid part of their program for a long time. The give to Banks right ahead, maybe for two. Good stop by Clark that time. But this is an experienced club. They can tell you that uh, there are a lot of inexperienced players on it. But when you look at Iowa's roster, 14 starters from the 95 Rose Bowl team. Still a lot of time-tested veterans on there. Virginia. The 23rd, one to three win over Timmy's alma mater. That was a big test for Mark Duffner. He was taking the Maryland Terrapins down to Charlottesville. Wanted to find out how, how good he is, how good his ball club is after a 2-0 start. Virginia's talented with Tiki Barber. Rodney Filer now in that fullback. The play action. Turning the pass to Dwight and he overthrew him. He was open after Dewan Anderson fell down at the 15-yard line. And don't forget at the conclusion of today's game, we will select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. To date, Chevrolet has awarded nearly $6 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. In the end of today's game, and Tavian Banks, I would say, has a little bit of an inside edge right now. <laughs> been explosive, hadn't he? He had that uh, long run over 80 yards, and then, of course, uh, banged it in after Shaw took it down and had the second touchdown. Split Banks and Rodney Filer now in the backfield. Norman working up top. Timo Owens is open at the goal line. Touchdown, Iowa. Damian Gibson, actually the man. I'll tell you what, Timmy, you could see it happening, though. He ran right by the corner. There. Nobody picked him up near the end zone. But the bad news is you're going to put all that on Kevin Hudson, the cornerback, who let him go and let him clear. But they're playing a man free. Tracy Williams, the uh, strong safety, number 31, never gets over to help. All right, there's where Hudson lets him go. Now, Williams, 31, right there, never came over to the outside. Wide as the widest, deep as the deepest is his responsibility, and never got over there to help out. So you put that one on the safety, not necessarily on Kevin Hudson. Damon Gibson with the touchdown catch, and give Matt Sherman a lot of credit on that, too. He looked off the defense, he looked to the right, then looked back. The touchdown catch. The extra point now, and this one begins to turn into a route. 21 to nothing. Forget about the breakdown on defense. That ball was perfectly thrown. Iowa up 21 nothing against Iowa State in this one. You have to go back 14 years to 1982. Last time that the Cyclones beat the Hawkeyes in a frustrating day offensively. For Hayden Fry's offense, Chuck Long was that quarterback, but they couldn't get anything going on. Hawkeye defense stepped up, though, to score the only touchdown, but it was an Iowa State victory, 19-7 that day. Not so this afternoon so far. Damon Gibson, the touchdown catch, and earlier the two runs by Tavian Banks to make it a 21-0 game. This one fielded at the 11-yard line. Out, and the ball's on the ground at the 30. Kevin Wilson was the man returning, and he fumbled. And there are flags all over the place as well. Terry, sitting down with the Iowa coaches yesterday, though, didn't you have that air of confidence? I mean, say, what is, has Iowa State really changed much? They said, no, they haven't. We're still very strong. We should beat them if we play our game. Very confident. Mm-hmm. The one thing that they mentioned, though, that Hayden Fry talked about in his coaches that you know, they really felt Dan McCarney had them playing very hard, smart football, and were learning his schemes in his second year now. And uh, that's something that takes time, though. Yeah, Iowa State, a better team mentally, no question about it. And they're getting stronger, and they have a new weight room, and they've got a $10.5 million new, dollar new building, but uh, they haven't gotten there yet. Now, here's the fumble. You see the ball get stripped, and there's the face mask on the left side. Good call by the official. Hey, Richard Willock in there on the tackle and you can see Iowa State getting the ball back. 
So first down at the 35 for the Cyclones. The long count. And here's Troy Davis. Bust through up to the 44. So every bit of his yardage this afternoon. Tough running. He's earned it. Yeah, but don't you have the feeling that he is going to break one? It's been close several times, and he gets through the uh, the line so quickly, and the secondary is going to break down at some time, and he's going to he's going to break it. It's been one tackle away a couple of times from breaking one. Only 57 yards in total offense. Almost 300 for Iowa. You think that's not dominant? Mm. Wow. Come on, Bob. Show me, show me. So Jackson directing traffic comments here. The fullback now comes more to the near side. Straight ahead is Troy Davis trying to get to the 46-yard line for the first down, but I'm not sure he got there. And, Tim, it's been one of those things this afternoon. Early on, the Iowa State defense playing very well, but two quick plays by Banks and then the long touchdown pass. Yeah, and oftentimes that happens. And what that does is that puts doubt into the mind of a team that's lost 13 in a row mm -hmm. to this ball club. And so with that little planted seed of doubt, now all of a sudden a lot of things can change, and all of a sudden it's 21 zip, and you say, hey, what's going to happen? In a streak like this, everyone talks about the pressure that's on Iowa because of that, but I, I think you're right. I think it's the other way around. I yeah, think there's more pressure on Iowa State, the team that's lost 13 in a row because there's always that little bit of doubt Down goes Dotson. wrapped up in the backfield number 94 Jared DeVries in there and you can see this Iowa defense too it, it has been just absolutely diamond dominant in the first half a loss of 12 on that watch big old number 94 First of all, he tries to get in a seam. Now he'll try to overpower guys and pull them out of the way with the big rip move. He gets in and makes the sack. Here's a guy that had two sacks last week. He's a big, strong guy. Still runs a 4-7, even though he's 265 pounds. Guy leads by example. They follow him everywhere. He's just a talented player. As you mentioned earlier, he was a former running back that ran for over 4,500 yards in high school. Which is hard to believe when you watch him today. He is quick, though. Would you want to tackle him? No, thank you. Second and 23. Little screen out to Davis. Not going to go anywhere at the 38-yard line. Brett Chambers, what a nice play. You know, if you're if you're Troy Davis and you run that screen and you get hit like that, now you're laying on the ground and you look around you and you see big old number 75, Matt Rayfelt, is still standing. And you see Tim Cohn still standing. You've got to go back to the huddle and say something to those guys. They've got to get their butts in a black jersey and ride them out of there. Now, Chambers read it well, but you're right. He was able to fight right through that. Forget Valvoline in halftime 96 coming up at halftime, and I believe the guys have Don McAvoy in the studio. We're going to talk to him at least. Next week, Texas Notre Dame matchup. The scramble by Doxon gets back to the original line of scrimmage, maybe about the 45 yard line. Matt Hughes, the inside linebacker, made the stop, and again, a roar from this Kinnick Stadium crowd because the defense has held. Appreciative crowd. Out here in Iowa City, they understand football, they love their defense. They also love their offense. Feel pretty good about a 21-0 score. Mm -hmm. I think at this point, Dan McCartney just wants to get his guys in the locker room at halftime and see if they can change some things. White Banks back deep. Busiest man in the afternoon is Mark Harris. Seven punts on the afternoon. Here's Dwight at 11. Can't get outside. Wrapped up at the 17-yard line. And for a look at what's coming up at halftime, we take you right now to John Saunders in New York. Going to get Todd out of that back room. Every time I look up there, he's working hard in the back room. And John's just sitting out front. Yeah. How does that work? Uh, hot dog talking to us. He's the veteran. Yeah, that's that's how that works. He's earned it. Ryan Driscoll now in a quarterback for the Hawkeye. And here comes Berger. The big fullback across the 30 to the 31. And an Iowa first down. So they make the change at quarterback right now to get Driscoll in there, a senior out of Cedar Rapids. We talked about planting the seed of doubt as soon as Iowa got a couple of scores on the board. But Iowa State right now just looks so tentative. They're not, they're not getting hits. They're not getting into the blockers and getting rid of them. Just kind of hanging on and dancing with the Iowa guys. Hey, look at Driscoll. He was a starter. Started six games in 94, broke his collarbone, and lost the starting job to Matt Sherman. There were times last year when he thought he should have been starting. And Sherman struggled. 
Aaron Granquist in at fullback, and he gets the carry over the left side this time, and another Iowa first down. So you give it to the fullback, Berger, over the right side, give it to Granquist over the left side, and you get two first downs. They allowed Iowa State that time defensively just to run themselves out of the play and then came back under. Northwestern on the board again, 18 to 9. Now over the Blue Devils in Durham. Now this is an Iowa State defense that even though they're getting bigger, they're still a little bit undersized. And many thought that Iowa could wear them down on the ground throughout the afternoon, and that's exactly what's happening here. They just do get the playoff. The throw up to Odom's and underthrown, but there's a flag on the play. Dewan Anderson on the coverage and a lot of contact. You know, it wasn't so much the contact because it was good coverage by Dewan Anderson. He's a track guy. I think everybody in the in the conference knows about him in the 200 meters with a 21.7. But he never looked back for the ball. And if you don't look back for the ball, they're going to call it if there's contact. If you're looking back, you're making an effort. You have every right to be there as much as the offensive guy. But even he never looked back. Even though in the rule book, Timmy, there is a difference between the NFL rule and the absolutely, college rule. Absolutely. But watch this. He's never looking back for the ball until it's right there, and now he's on his back. In other words, he's, he really had no chance to make that catch, made the contact before the ball was there, not making an effort for the football that's interference every time. You can play the receiver in college football and do what they call face guarding in, in the NFL. However, you're right. Anytime you're just playing the receiver and, and the receiver contact. looks back to the ball, right. you're going to make contact and they're going to throw the play. Absolutely. Every time. So it's first and 10 at the 40 now for the Hawkeyes. Berger back in at fullback. Disco wants to change the play. Straight drop. Going up top to Dwight. Can't make the diving catch. Good coverage by Kevin Hudson that time, the cornerback. Boy, Twin, Tim Dwight is such an effort guy. I mean, he's, we talked about what a celebrity he is, but he's got terrific speed. He runs excellent routes. He's a candidate for the Blitnikoff Award and actually reminds you a little bit of Blitnikoff, uh -huh. the way he runs the patterns and walks and, and catches. And no stick him, though. <laughs> he led the team in receptions last year with 46. He is uh, an outstanding player. Uh, Hayden Fry says he is the fiercest competitor he's ever had here at Iowa, which is a big statement. He's in the slot now. Odom's to the near side wideout. Driscoll to run. Trying to get to the sideline. And down at the 28-yard line. And that'll be yeah. enough for a first. Another first down for Iowa. Well... Bulldog running back Robert Edwards tries to run circles around the Gamecock defense, a showdown in the SEC. Georgia taking on South Carolina tonight at 6.30 Central, only on ESPN. That's a big one for the Bulldogs, too, in Columbia. The loss in the first game, Jim Donnan starting his era at Georgia, and they, uh, they need a win. Terry, Aaron Granquist has just checked into the lineup as a fullback. He's a former walk-on, another one of those guys we talked about, came out for the club and made it. Jisco wants the timeout. We saw Sherman do that on the first drive of the ball game. So they'll talk it over. And he'll come back and have first and 10 at the 27. Let's check in again with John Saunders up in New York. John, good one going on there, John. Iowa leading here by three touchdowns. Not shocking to anyone, but uh, many thought that Iowa State uh, could hang in there. A couple of breaks early, momentum, but hasn't happened so far. No. Iowa State came into the game 0-1. They were beaten by Wyoming 41-38 in overtime, and you, you had the feeling that they were improved over last year, but really haven't shown it here in the first half. Yeah, we mentioned the Georgia-South Carolina game, just making sure that you know that is tonight. Uh, I believe we had next Saturday on there, but it is on ESPN tonight at 6.30 Central. That should be a good one in the SEC. Well, over 70,000 on hand here at Kinnick Stadium. Most of them liking what they're seeing here in the first half. Although, there are a lot of Iowa State fans so, coming in, all the tailgate partying going on, and uh, a lot of Iowa State fans out there and in here wearing the red, but uh, not happening so far. No, Iowa State hadn't been able to force the turnovers like they did last week. They got 17 points off turnovers, and Iowa's just not giving it to them. Almost 13 yards on first down throughout the afternoon. 
Oh, that's a great average. Obvious. On the roll, Driscoll to bank. Skins gets down to the 23, a game of about four on the play. The 155 and counting as they kept him in bounds to the end of the first half here. Well, so far you have to be impressed by what Iowa not only has done here, but uh, just their makeup offensively, the defense. You know, you look at the Big Ten schedule this year, and they uh, they have to be counted as one of the contenders. Well, there's no question. The coaches, the prognosticators, the people out here in Big Ten country know football, and they didn't pick Iowa as number one. That's not a fluke. I mean, they know it's a powerful ball game. Banks spikes his way down to about the 20-yard line, and Looks like the ball's loose. Iowa State says they have it, and they do. Just talked about turnovers. That's what helped Iowa State last week. They finally get one here. They've got 118 to work. They've got to be thinking points. They've got to do something with this possession. Chin Chibi, the right defensive end, came up with that football. Banks must have lost it once he got past the line of scrimmage and almost down. I mean, he had it the entire way, and all of a sudden, he saw the ball pop loose. So Dan McCarney gets a break here, a minute 18 left until halftime. We'll see if he can do anything with it. Shaking his head, a little frustration, raised here in Iowa City, high school star here at Iowa, played at the university, was on the stand, does not want to be embarrassed. Darren Davis now the roll back. Over the middle, caught by Williams. To the 42 and up to the 44-yard line. And if he could have stayed on his feet, he had no one between him and the end zone. Boy, you're right about that. The big old receiver, 6'3", out of Florida, made the catch. And I don't think he realized he was open, but he couldn't regain his balance. So you get up, the clock stops. 1.12 to go in the first half while they move the chains. Docks into Williams for 24 yards. So the ball rests on the 45-yard line. Minute eight and counting. Doxson for Watley, and he was open, but he overthrew him. I think he threw too early. Tyrone Watley, the 5'9 senior. The transfer from Pacific. The final in the Indiana game, 21-14. They get the win over Miami of Ohio. Okay, Doxson has to realize that incompletion doesn't hurt him. If anything, it helps. It stops the clock. I mean, it doesn't really help, but it does stop the clock. Just not a panic situation. Still have a lot of time. 104 to work with. Under pressure and down he goes at the 32, and that doesn't help a bit. Although no. they do still have three timeouts. Yeah, and he's going to take one here, but that's something that he can't afford to do. He cannot take a sack when they're trying to get down the field in a hurry-up offense. Yep. Just throw it away. Bill Ennis Inge, no surprise there. And they all came from the outside. You watch the guys inside, they buttoned down, they closed the gap. It's all outside pressure. He brought the safety, Damian Robinson, from the corner on a safety blitz, and nobody picked him up. But the thing Doxson has to do is he's got to feel that pressure coming, and he has to get rid of the ball. It's a great package defensively, though, on that line, isn't it? The bookends, DeBreeze and Bill Ennis Inge. Both had a couple of sacks last week against Arizona. Both had 12 sacks a year ago, the tie for third in the Big Ten. I love the way Hayden Fry and Bobby Elliott, the defensive coordinator, work that, though. They move things around. They're always bringing some pressure. They do it out of different schemes, different looks. This time, they bring Damian Robinson. They put him in a nine technique, which just means he's way outside. Bring him from the outside. Yeah. Ennis Inge is in there as well. And, you know, those guys, they move them around and do that defense so well. Well, next Saturday on ABC Sports, college football doubleheader at noon Eastern. Ninth-ranked Notre Dame taking on seventh-ranked Texas. Should be a good one. And then at 3.30 Eastern, Boston College against 11th-ranked Michigan. And, of course, games available on pay-per-view as well. A couple good ones there, Georgia Tech, North Carolina, Arizona, and Washington. So check with the cable operator for those available in your area next Saturday on ABC. Well, after the loss of 13, it's third and 23 now at the 32-yard line. Doxson, straight drop. Throws and in and out of the hands. The intended receiver, Ty Watley, went up in the air to get it, but he couldn't hold on. And he would have had a first down, a flag, though, on the plates. I mean, at midfield. You know, it looked like he jumped too early. Flag is at midfield. It's going to be against Iowa State. Oh, 
They had an ineligible, ineligible receiver down here. I'm trying to find out where he came from. I I'll tell you this. Todd Doxson in this drive has thrown with more authority, though, than he has all day. He's stepping up and he's trying to fire hard. Well, they decline the penalty because it brings up fourth and 23. Don't you think, too, when you go into that two minute offense, it takes some pressure off your quarterback, even though the defense knows you're going to throw? Yeah, it he sure does, does, too, and he can focus on that. Right, it sure does. And a lot of times when you go into that hurry up, the defense goes into a prevent, plays a little bit softer. White, back at his own 28 yard line. Mark Harris, again with the punt. This one off the side of his foot. He's been terrific to this point. And it's going to bounce back into Iowa State territory. A punt of 17 yards for a man who is a preseason All Big 12 pick. And one of the best punters you're going to find around the country. Now, Iowa still has 39 seconds, 38 seconds to work with here in Iowa State territory. Just inside midfield for Hayden Pride and his offense. And Ryan Driscoll back out there at quarterback. 21 to nothing. The Hawkeyes lead the Cyclones in this one. Michael Berger, the lone back, the fullback. And here comes Driscoll to throw. He's got a man at the 10-yard line, incomplete. Demo Odoms was behind the secondary. He had a couple of steps on his man. And again, it was Kevin Hudson, Terry. Watch this now. Hudson has him manned up. Here comes Demo Odoms. Now, the part of this is that Driscoll bought some time by scrambling. And I think that's where Hudson gave him up. Now, the ball was underthrown. Had he led him, it's a touchdown. Well, he just ran right by Kevin Hudson. And we saw Damon Gibson do that for the touchdown. So 30 seconds remaining in the half. And we found out Iowa wasn't going to sit on it. So play action. Driscoll goes out to the fullback. Berger sidesteps. Gets down to the 42-yard line. They're about three yards shy of the first down. 20 seconds and counting. And now Iowa will take the timeout. So Ryan Driscoll will go over and talk it over with Hayden Fry. 17 seconds left in the half. The Hawkeyes trying to pour more on. Well, this is the point where you get greedy. Third and three, 17 seconds left in the first half. You're already up by three touchdowns, but it's never enough to go no, the locker room. And you're right, especially in a rivalry like this. Now, 17 seconds left. Uh, the thing here is that we were out here on Thursday, we're watching uh, Hurley, Brian Hurley, kick 65 yarders. He's got a strong leg. As a matter of fact, in the record books, if you go and you look under Hurley, he's had a 47 yarder, he's had a 51 yarder. Mm -hmm. He is capable of hitting that long field goal, has a strong leg. They just want to line him up here, give him a few more yards, get him in position. Even Hurley has a long field goal kicker, and Byron has the short field goal kicker. Driscoll with a straight drop. Throwing it out to his tailback. That's Banks trying to get out of bounds, and he can't. Wrapped up at the 37-yard line, eight seconds and counting. And they stop it to move the chains. Iowa, a key first down because they stopped that clock, and here comes Brian Hurley on to try a field goal. They've got to line up quickly. That game, that ball's put back in play. Clock starts again. It's a 54-yard try. And the flags come down. Aiden Fry was upset because uh, they did not stop the clock when they should have to move the chains. The clock kept running. There were at least about three, four seconds, it looked like, where the clock kept running, yeah. Right now, the clock says zero. Which will be changed. So they'll put three seconds back on the game clock and disregard that penalty play. Boy, Hayden Fry's not happy about that. It took Hurley out of his rhythm. He was ready to make the kick. Ryan Hurley, a 54-yard field goal drop.
from 54 yards out. In the Sun Bowl, he had a 47-yarder, a 50-yarder. Thursday, we watched him kick a 65-yarder here in the stadium when he was out there by himself. He's got a strong leg. They get it through. I'm going to tell you something. Iowa State is not happy about that. Early, the senior out of Iowa City with a 54-yard field goal to end the first half. He had plenty of leg on this one. 24 to nothing. Iowa with the lead at halftime. There's a reaction of Hurley. Right now, let's take it to New York and John Saunders. Back in Iowa City, 24 to nothing. Hawkeyes, it has been all Iowa as we get ready for the start of the second half. Terry Gannon and Tim Brandt here in the booth. And equally impressive, I think, Timmy, is the way you dressed for this game today. And I'll tell you what. The L.A. look right here in the booth from Tim Brandt, the no socks look. No, you know what? It was a total accident. I forgot my socks. No, I you, really forgot my socks. No, that's, that's not the way you wanted it to be right here? No, you got, not really. You got that Hollywood look going on. It's 64 degrees, beautiful day, a little chill in the air, and you, you don't bring your socks this week. Actually, I do have some socks when I have this little pet. No, no, I forgot my socks. I really did. I apologize for that. <laughs> you guys are killing me. <laughs> Iowa with the second half kickoff. The short kick and the fair catch taken at the 22 yard line so a little pooch kick that time and Iowa State will start there trying to get something going on offense in the second half first half nothing going on statistically no you know what Iowa State has to be sick eight possessions eight punts and the most telling statistic to me is not on this board Iowa State is averaging just two yards per play while Iowa is getting almost 10 per play you can't do that so if you're Iowa State, you have to go back to basics now and say, hey, look, let's just get it to our guy. That's that's Davis. Doxon has to be more comfortable with the football, and they just got to start pounding things out and go back to the fundamentals and say, let's see if we can get any kind of offense generated. Here's Davis. 31 yards rushing for the team in the first half, but here's Troy Davis with a big gain on first down, and he has a first down. Terry, I'd give it to him more times than you can imagine. Every play, I just keep giving it back to Davis. A gain of 14 on the first play from scrimmage for Iowa State and Troy Davis, the 5'8", 190-pound junior out of Miami. Southridge High School gained 2,000 yards plus there. You look, you look at the yards per rush. That's what you're talking about, the 2.2 yards and almost 11 for Iowa. Joe Palmentier, the fullback, and Troy Davis. Now, Doxon moving Palmentier around in the backfield. First down at the 37. They give it to Davis again. No shot. He's got a lot of room. He may go. A man to beat inside the 10 and down to the three-yard line. Kerry Cooks, the strong safety, ran him down, but a gain of 61 for Troy Davis. What a great cutback by Davis. They went strong right. He even took time to reposition guys in the backfield. They look everything right. Now watch the cutback after he goes to the right side. Cuts back. Now he's in the secondary. Now it's a foot race. He's only 5'8", 190 pounds. He's got great speed. These guys had an angle on him, and because of the pursuit angle, they're ready to get him before he gets into the end zone. But that is a tremendous uplift for Iowa State. Troy Davis. Well, you call to give it to Davis left, give it to Davis right. First and goal at the two. Davis down to the goal line. No signal. He's just short of it. I'd give it to Davis again. And if I'm Troy, I'd go in that huddle and challenge the offensive lineman to give me any kind of crease. Well, we talked at the start of the game how important it was for Iowa State to get something going early for their confidence, to believe that they could win here at Kinnick Stadium after 13 straight losses against Iowa. Opening up the second half, they've really got something going against a defense that has not allowed 100 yards rushing in the last four games going back to last year. Yeah, well, Davis has 125 right now. He's already passed that. As Jackson, the fullback in with Davis. Here comes Troy diving to the end zone and a touchdown. Great start of the second half for the Cyclone. John McKay a long time ago that said, hey, that ball's not heavy. Just keep giving it to him. No reason to go away from that here in the second half for Dan McCartney. You knew he was going to break one. They can't hold him all day. This is a guy that ran for more than 2,000 yards last year. Led the nation with 183 yards per game. Jamie Cole on for the extra point. Inside the right upright, so seven on the board. 
All right, so the offense, the offense has now done its job. Now the defense has to come out and make a stop. I saw the 100-yard graphic in terms of the Iowa defense. The last four games, not giving up 100 yards. 127 now on the ground for Troy Davis, and almost eight yards per carry. The 61-yard run down to the two-yard line. Boy, it was well designed, too, because Doxon took his time, repositioned the backs, got everything strong right, and then Davis made a tremendous cutback behind the wall on the left side. Amatier, the fullback, a nice block leading the way to the end zone. Four plays, 77 yards in, just over a minute and a half off the clock. The opening drive of the second half, all four plays, by the way. You know who, Troy Davis. Well, and I think that's the way they have to go. Mm -hmm. He's your hoss. You got to keep going back to him. Well, the one thing that Dan McCartney has talked about going into this year is more balance offensively of pass to run. This was a team that really ran the football, obviously, very well last year, over 2,000 yards for Davis, but you get in a situation like this, you go back to the guy that got you there. you got to believe that Dan McCartney really let him have in the locker room. He's a motivational type guy anyway, and I think Iowa State was embarrassed in that first half. Jamie Cole with a kickoff here. 13-21. Only a minute, 39 off the clock in the third quarter, and here's Richard Carter taking it back. Breaking to the outside. He's got Cole to beat. Inside the 20, and tripped up at the 14-yard line. He almost broke it all the way. Tom Radke made the touchdown saving tackle. But Carter brought it back all the way 75 yards. And what an answer to that first drive by Iowa State. Well, and that's why this is a championship team. This, if you look at Dan McCartney now, he's frustrated. His offense came in, they did their job. Special teams comes out and has a tremendous breakdown and lets Iowa come right back. Now watch this. First of all, you have a mix up here. So you figure the cover team's gonna be able to get something going. But instead, look at the wedge, look at the hole open up. Breaks two tackles, then see ya. He has to beat the kicker. And if it wasn't for the pursuit angle that cut him off, that would have been in the house. There's Tavian Banks on first down at the 13. Fights his way inside the 10 to the nine. So Banks in there on the first play from scrimmage offensively for Iowa in the second half. Cedric Shaw on the sideline here. Bill Marceau made the tackle. It's a sign of a very good football team that can give up a touchdown and say, all right, I'm coming right back at you. Mm -hmm. Thanks to the big first half, obviously, at the 89-yard touchdown run, followed that up with a 12-yard TD run. Again in the eye, Berger and Banks on second and six at the nine. Banks looking for room. Down to about the five. Needs to get to the three for the first down. Tracy Williams, the strong safety, made the hit. Give a lot of credit to Don Patterson, the offensive coordinator for the Hawkeyes. Really had a nice game plan coming in. Although I don't think he even suspected that. <laughs> there he is right there with a the headset. Looking, well, they all have headsets. The guy to the left of the screen. The guy to the left of the screen. Don Patterson here, 18 years. <laughs> With Hayden Fry. But I don't think he even expected Tavian Banks to be the guy scoring all the touchdowns. Well, Matt Sherman calls the timeout, and they'll talk things over. When we come back, they'll have third and two from the five-yard line. Third down and two for the Hawkeyes on the five-yard line. Three men in the backfield, including Tim Dwight here. Tavian Banks, the deep back. Dwight with the carry down to the end zone. He's into the end zone. Touchdown. Dwight, the junior, out of City High School here in Iowa City and a star not only on this campus but in Iowa City. Good call, short yardage defense, run the cross buck, everything goes one side, then here comes the ball carrier on the trap the other side. Boy, I'll tell you what, here's Dwight, all-American type guy, all Big Ten player, got in there. The end zone with extra effort, he was hit on the one. It's a fine runner, fine talent. Zach Romer on for the extra point, splits the uprights. And so after the impressive first drive of the second half by the Cyclones, getting on the board for the first time, the Hawkeyes answer, and it's 31-7 on the touchdown run 
from Tim Dwight. You know, when Dwight came in as a freshman here, he was a tailback. They were playing Central Michigan. The guys were hot and sweaty out on the field. He was on the sidelines. He picked up the water and carried it on the field, acted as the manager. He was doing it all. He played tailback, wide receiver, and manager against Central Michigan. Did it all in high school, too. One of those stars coming out, legendary in high school. City High, the Iowa Player of the Year, 200 meters champion in track. Well, you can, you can summarize his talents by saying that he led the Hawkeyes in 1995 in receiving, receiving yards, punt returns, and kickoff returns. Well, tonight on ABC, a brand new season for second Noah, and you won't believe what happens in the season premiere. Then Tom Hanks stars in the movie that brings down the house, The Money Pit, all tonight on ABC. You talk about Dwight not only leading them in all those categories, but also in terms of the punt coverage and the kick coverage. He, he's the guy that goes down, and even though the coaches really don't want him to, he goes down, breaks up the wedge, just takes on anybody who's in his way. It's gotten to the point now he is so aggressive and so reckless and causing big plays like that, they're afraid he's going to get hurt on yeah. the special team, so they, they tell him to stay out of there now. Right. Now Troy Davis back, awaiting Ryan Hurley's kick. And a short kick. Taking at the 13 and out across to the 32-yard line is Kevin Wilson. So pretty good field position for the Cyclones on their second drive of this second half. Now you got to believe if you're Dan McCarney in, in his offense right now, even though you feel good about what you did on that first drive, you now the air is taken out a little bit after the long kickoff return and uh, the touchdown by Iowa. Yeah, emotionally, you have to believe that he really got them stoked at halftime. They came in and, it, as you said, four plays, 77 yards, and they scored and then lose that right away on the uh, special team. So, again, I think you have to go right back now. Troy Davis isn't in. Darren Davis is. But you got to just start giving it to your tailbacks and let them go. As Jackson, the fullback leading the way for Darren Davis. Troy's brother bouncing back to the inside. No room, though. And he may have lost about a yard, yard and a half. Aaron Klein ran him down. Hey, look at the brother combination for Iowa State. Obviously getting a lot of publicity after the year that Troy had last year, but very similar. You know, they're, they're similar in styles. They're similar in builds. How about how about the uh, the backfield? As you look at those two guys, the, the Darren and Troy show, you look what they did last week. How about those guys in high school at Miami Southridge High School? Not only were they together in the backfield, but they also had uh, Sedwick Irving in there, Michael Irving's Michael's cousin. cousin. Yeah. That's one heck of a high school that's, backfield. That's not bad at all. Both Davis has rushed for over 2,000 yards. The season in high school, this one's complete out to midfield. Damon Green with a catch. And they'll move the chains a gain of 20. That was a nice play. They've had five straight running plays to start the second half. So Iowa starts cheating up to take the run away, and they find Green in the seam. And Doxon hit him with a nice pass. So first down at the 49 of Iowa. Troy Davis, the lone setback, three receiver set. And Doxon with the straight drop. Going up top to Williams, a lot of contact, no flag, and incomplete. And let's go down very quickly. To Lewis Johnson, we're talking about Tim Dwight. How big a star is he, Lewis? You know, he's really big, guys. You know, they call him the mayor of Iowa City. I've got a test. I've got a couple of sharp ABC hats here. Look at this one is our new one for this year. And what I did was I got some signatures. Here's Tim Dwight's signature. Here's Hayden Fry's signature. Now, we're going to find out which signature is more popular here in Iowa City. Listen, I've got a couple of hats here. Hayden Fry, Tim Dwight. Which do you prefer? Without a doubt, Timmy Dwight! <laughs> that says it. He's the mayor, guys. <laughs> After all these years that Hayden has put in in Iowa City, Isn't that amazing? they said that was the, the case. They said he is the biggest celebrity here. Yeah, the touchdown moments ago. Timeout right now on the field. Iowa State has taken it. We're back in a moment to Iowa City. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Pontiac and your local Pontiac dealer. We are driving excitement. And Burger King, where you can get your burgers with. About 10-28 left in the third quarter, 31-7. The Hawkeyes leading it 
Yeah, he's a star too. Hayden, Hayden got his own uh, poster there. Not as big as Tim Dwight, according to the fans. Though. There goes Doxon on the roll. Inside the 40, down to the 39, close to a first down. You get a look at some of his running ability, too. A guy who led the team a couple of year, years ago in rushing. And it's that mobility that had the Iowa coaches concerned. They knew about uh, Davis. They knew about both Davises. And they knew about the passing game with Eddie Williams and Watley. But the what really concerned them was Doxon and his mobility. Not so much on the corners, but just on a scramble and trying to break things up the middle. But here, of course, this was a design play for Doxon, and he picked up enough yardage with... Almost, uh, well, it looks like it's enough for the first down. It's going to be close. Very close. They're going to measure. But he, when you look at the rushing attack, he's got it. That's enough. Yep, that's enough. You look at the Davis is in the backfield, but Jackson certainly adds another element with what he can do. He's got about four or five speed. This is a different Iowa State team than we saw in the first half. They're able to move the ball. They've got more versatility in the attack. Colorado. A 13 to 10 over Michigan still. I'd go back to Troy Davis, though. I'd give it to him and give it to him again. We have both Davises in the backfield in the eye right now. First down at the 39. And there's Darren. Fights his way inside the 35 down to the 34 yard line and a lot of action away from the ball still. We saw some of that early out in this game, Timmy, after the play is whistled dead, some pushing and shoving. This time it was Tommy Knight who got locked up. I don't mean locked up, locked up, but he got locked up with Mike Brantley, and they were pushing and shoving after the play had ended. Doxon looks much more comfortable this half. Second down and about five in the 34. Off the play action roll, out to Darren Davis. The spin wow. still on his feet. Wow. Knocked out of bounds. What a move down to the 17. He's got a first down, and I'm not sure how he got away. Wow. Do you believe that? The gain of 17 from the younger Davis. First of all, Todd Doxon looks so comfortable here. Watch this. The fake, the play action. Now, just get it out there in a hurry. You don't want to wait on this play. It's all timing. Now, watch the spin move. Boom. The spin. And, I mean, Damian Robinson, number three, is just grasping at air. He came up with nothing but air. Tremendous speed and ability there. He's 5'8 as well. Here's his brother Troy trying to stay on his feet, crawling down to the 11-yard line. Guys Aaron Klein balance. tripped him up. Yeah, you look at the balance and the low center of gravity, one of the things that makes him so tough to bring down. High school wrestler at 189 pounds. His brother wrestled at 160. A lot of comparisons have been made. To Troy Davis and Barry Sanders. Mm -hmm. Physically and talent wise. I mean, physically, they're almost identical. 5'8, 200 pounds, right around there. Not a bad guy to be compared to. Four receivers set. Davis, the only back in the backfield right now. And first and 10 at the at about the 13. Davis fighting his way down to the seven yard line, maybe the six. Terry, when you watch Troy Davis, He's got that acceleration. First of all, he's a hide-and-seek runner. You know, he's only 5'8", so he hides behind these big offensive linemen, an offensive line that averages about 300 pounds, so he gets lost behind them. Once he finds his hole, then he accelerates through the hole, and then once there's contact made, then he uses his power. Now, I was at Florida State last week, and got to look at Warwick Dunn. They're about the same size in terms of 5'8", or 5'9", but you look at the speed of Dunn as opposed to the power of Davis he gets hit. And I think Davis tougher to bring down with that power. So first and goal at the six yard line. Troy wanted to go outside, but he got tripped up right at the line of scrimmage. Aaron Klein had a hole of his left leg. Yeah, see that time the offense and defense did a good job. Cohn and uh, Ray felt and off of, they all fired out, did their job. But the defense, everybody's on the ground. Too many guys on the ground for the running back to find any seams. And even when he tried to cut it outside, his feet were all tangled up around bodies on the ground. That was it. Second down and goal from the sixth. The crowd now raising the level of North. For the throw to the end zone, a touchdown for the Cyclone. The fullback, Joe Palmentier, out of the backfield. 
right, so if you're playing defense, Terry, what are you thinking? You're thinking Troy Davis. Absolutely. So everybody's locking on Troy Davis. Now watch the fullback, the top right of your screen. All right, now here's the play action to Troy Davis. See the fullback right here? Now he's going to drop by that line. Let it roll. And look, he's wide open in the flats. Good move by Doxson to pull it down so that the pass is not batted down. He knew his guy was wide open. He just had to find the alley to get it to him, and he did for the touchdown. Two impressive drives here in the second half by Iowa State. And they're going to go for two. 31 to 13 right now. And you got Troy Davis in the backfield all along. The roll. The look. And no one open. And down goes Doxson. Matt Hughes got him in the backfield along with Jared DeFries. So the point after unsuccessful and we stand at 31 to 13. The Hawkeyes in the lead. Dan McCartney's club trails 31 to 13, but Tim, a couple of impressive drives in the second half, and this is a team that's still playing very hard in this one. This is a different team than we saw in the first half, and I think that guy right there, it's to his credit. Dan McCartney is a motivator. He's back in his hometown making his debut here as a college head coach. He's got the team continuing to play, even though they were down big at the half. They're making somewhat of a ball game at this. At least they're making a run, and they've had two very successful drives. Tim Dwight back to receive Jamie Cole's kickoff inside his own five. At the 20-yard line. Boy, he was hit. That was Preston Ramey who <laughs> knocked him to the turf. You know, the last time the special teams was out there after a touchdown, they gave up that big return. I think the special team coaches told him, hey, you make the tackle this time or don't come back to our sideline. Look, he's running right into the wedge. He's looking for something to happen. It doesn't. The white jersey's everywhere. And watch. They just slam and stone the blockers right back into R Tim. Ramey took and, on Banks and yeah. Dwight. And Timmy had nowhere to go. He lost his feet, went up in the air, and he's wondering, hey, I'm doing a helicopter here. Nobody's helping me. Michael Berger along with Cedric Shaw in the backfield now, out of the eye. Play action. Sherman throwing. He's got Dwight at the 33 and a first down. And very quickly, for a Northwestern Duke update, let's go to John Saunders in New York. Wow, what a good one going on there. Top game of the day in college football. Unless, of course, you live in the state of Iowa and went to Iowa or Iowa State. And you're looking in on rivalry. Shaw slipped at the 34 and got to about the 35. Cedric comes up a little bit with a uh, flat tire. See how high he wears his pants? He wears his pants actually over his knee. Now, the rule book says he's got to have knee pads and that it has to cover his knee. And I know I used to try to wear my pants like that because you don't want anything in your knee so that you can run faster. You don't want anything to right there in the joint. But a lot of guys, they get away with that. A lot of officials, though, they'll make you pull your pants down so that it's covering your knee for your own protection. You wear any socks? <laughs> the Tim Brandt School of Dressing. Banks now in for Shaw. Cedric Shaw, by the way, 14 carries for 78 yards on the day. Banks with 126 yards on the afternoon. He catches one out of the backfield. Has a first down, still on his feet to midfield. He is so elusive, and he's shaken up a little bit. Dave Bershka, the middle linebacker, made the hit. And there is a flag down at the 45 along with Banks. Tavian Banks having a sensational afternoon. Trying to regroup here, make sure all his body parts are in, in order. He may have come down on the football when he landed. Got a personal foul against Iowa State. And Banks still on his back. I think we can take a look and see what happened. Well, he was pulled down actually from behind. His feet gave way. Now watch. It's almost like a side slip tackle right here. No, I thought he came down hmm. on the ball. He did not, but he's holding his rib cage. Just landed in an awkward position. Almost looked like uh, his momentum whipped him around, whipped the top of his body around. That made the tackle Dave Bershka, but Damian Banks up and walking off. So a good sign for Hayden Fry and the Iowa faithful. What an afternoon he's had, starting with the 89-yard TD run early on in this one. Well, the offense is still looking for a running back because Shaw went out injured. Banks came, came out injured. They're looking for somebody to put in there. And they're going to go with Richard Carter. And Richard Carter, number four, comes in. 
at the wideout spot. So what they'll do now with Richard in the ball game, Richard Carter now, they'll just kind of split wide. See if he goes to a pass. Draw. Nope, the draw to Berger. Big fullback finding his way down to the 32. He's had a couple of long runs this afternoon, and they've used him a lot. Rudy Ruffalo made the stop on Berger, but Berger... 6'3", 229, and a sophomore out of Harlan, Iowa, had four carries for 11 yards last week against Arizona. Getting a lot of work, though, today, and Tavian Banks back in in the backfield. So that's a good sign. Second and six after the game of four by Berger. Ball resting at the 31-yard line. He's got a hurry. Play clock down to five. Just does get it off. Throwing up top. He's got a man far sideline. Can't make the catch. Boy, he was extended. Richard Woolock, the junior out of Chicago, almost had it. If they continue to pick on Kevin Hudson, he's going to get off the bus and start backpedaling next week. I mean, there's no question. He runs right by Hudson on this. Hudson tries to get a hand on him and cannot even jam him at the line. And he just ran by him. I mean, if that ball is well thrown, it's another touchdown. Mm-hmm. Been a long afternoon for Hudson. And they have continued to pick on him. Yeah, yeah they sure have. Northwestern on the board again, 32 to 10 now over Duke. Third and six here for the Hawkeyes. Big third down for Iowa State with four on the play clock. He's got to take a timeout. Yeah, we talked to the coaches yesterday, and they pride themselves on not having to do that very often. And that's something that throughout the afternoon they have had to do a number of times. And, and they have got, barely gotten some plays off. Hayden probably can't be pleased with that. Well, Matt Sherman is a very experienced quarterback, and he's had great success. He's 11-4 and four as a starter. He was second-team All-Big Ten. And he doesn't make a whole lot of mistakes. But again, because of the injuries, you know, he came back with uh, Richard Willock came into the ballgame again. Your two tailbacks really are banged up, although Banks did come back in. He wasn't 100%. So everything's a little bit awkward. You're making some adjustments, and the bottom line is the play clock is winding down. And don't forget next Saturday, another big day of college football on ABC Sports. The doubleheader begins at noon. This should be a great one. Number nine, Notre Dame goes down to Texas. Maybe the biggest game in a long, long time down in Texas. They are ranked seventh in the nation. A lot of people feel that they have a shot at the national championship this year. Then at 3.30 Eastern, Boston College battling 11th ranked Michigan. Other games as well. Call your local cable operator for those available on pay-per-view in your area next Saturday on ABC Sports. I'm looking forward to that Georgia Tech uh, North Carolina game down at Keenan Stadium down at Chapel Hill. See how good uh, Carolina really is. They're 2-0, have this weekend off. You got to look at Georgia Tech last week against NC State and their win. Georgia Leary turning things around with the Yellow Jackets. Hard to believe it was 1990 that Georgia Tech were co-national champions. You're right. Before you know it, they were 1-10. You're right. And he's bringing them back now. So Iowa comes back from the line of scrimmage, third and six at the 31. Berger and Banks out of the eye. Great drop for Sherman. Under pressure, he's going to go down. Oh, great Derek blitz by Clark. Derek Clark. Great call by the defensive coordinator, Larry Coyer. A loss of 15 on the play as Clark got there right away. They showed blitz all the way. Now watch Derek Clark. It's a numbers game. They're just outnumbering the, the blockers, and nobody picks up Clark. He comes up the middle free. He's the linebacker, the will linebacker on the weak side. Nobody there to block him, and he gets a good sack. See him? He's already cheating up in the line. He's not disguising the fact that he's coming, but they've just outnumbered him, and there's nobody left to pick him up. Good play. Good call by Larry Coyier. Nick Gallery's punt. Mike Lincavich back. Watching it bounce inside the five. Bring it back down. He didn't save it. Crowd doesn't like it, but it got to the end zone. A pun of 44 yards. Larry Coyer talking about the call on the blitz. In the middle, smoking the pipe, made a tremendous call. You know, he, he was concerned and has been worried about all the young guys on his defense. Now he says the defense is on a mission. He's got a little... Got his guys playing recklessly here in the second half, and we've seen the difference. Did it break the plane? I think it did. I think it's a good call. Eh, it's tough to tell from that angle, but uh, the official right on the goal line. So, get them trying to 
save it. Could not. So first down at the 20. They're going up top. And did he get it? Incomplete. No. no, but he should have had it. That's a situation that Eddie Williams should have made the catch. And had he made the catch, probably would have not gotten hurt. I say that because when he did bobble it, he was looking back and slowed into the tackler. All right, the ball is well thrown. All right, but watch, after he bobbles it, it came off his chest plate on his shoulder pads. See, now he has to turn that way and never mm. can face the tackler. Damian Robinson just laid a lick on him. Took that helmet in the hip. Yeah, well after he bobbled it and dropped it. Yeah. But Robinson couldn't tell that. Well, that's a shame because he's a he's a quality player. You hate to see him make a, a miss on a ball that normally he would catch. Consequently, because of the miss, the bobble, he turns his back on the tackler and got hit. And Williams had a big game last week against Wyoming. Seven catches. And last year in, in this matchup, had a big one. Eight catches for 131 yards, and he was walking very gingerly. Leading receiver last year, 46 receptions. Marquee player, obvious talent. From Hialeah High School in Opelika, Florida. Yep. So it brings up second and ten for Dan McCarney's offense. Four receivers set now. And Jackson working traffic. And the ball's on the turf. He's got it back about the 12-yard line. That looks awful from the get-go. Bill Ennis Inge in there just a little bit late to recover that fumble. Jackson got it back. Killing themselves with mistakes. He wanted to fake it and put it on the hip of Troy Davis, but the ball got tied up in there somehow, and he dropped it. So it backs him up. It's now third and 18 at the 12. The crowd on its feet once again. Davis, the lone setback. The play action. A lot of time over the middle. Man open, but incomplete. Mike Brantley was there, but he threw it behind him. And let's check in on Michigan and Colorado with John Saunders in New York. John, what do you have? John. Uh, I'll tell you what. Not that anyone was doubting the fact that Michigan could hang in that thing, but I think that's a big-time surprise for them to be leading at this point. Harris's punt bounces right at midfield. And is downed at the 46-yard line. Good field position for Iowa. A punt of... 40 yards and no return and let's take it quickly down to Lewis Johnson Lewis Terry just had a talk with Ed Crowley now he is the head trainer for Iowa talking about Cedric Shaw and he said that Cedric has a sprained left ankle they've taken all the tape to shoe off uh, he's got some ice on that thing and I guess with the score of 31 13 they've decided to rest him for the rest of the game so he will sit the bench and watch the rest of this one all right Lewis and Tim we talk about the Heisman much more I think than players at least Cedric Shaw talks about it or thinks about it but Gains 78 yards, goes out with the injury. One game like that enough to put something like that in serious doubt? Absolutely. It takes you off the front page. And, of course, as you know, that trophy is won with publicity. Right. You know, it's more the hype ward than the Heisman. And uh, any time you sit down like that, it's going to hurt you. Play clock running out. They're not going to get a timeout. Well, they get the timeout. The flags came down as the play clock ran out. But... Matt Sherman called timeout, second time in this half, and you can see how Hayden Fry reacts to that. I don't think he's pleased. No, and the officials are going to come <laughs> together, too. The officials are coming together because there was a flag dropped, and they're going to now discuss, was, was the time expired? Okay, the timeout was called before the flag was dropped. That's what they were talking about. Boy, Hayden's hot. These are the mental errors he said yesterday that he hates his ball clubs to make. Yeah, that hat taking a beating here on the turf. Need a new one every game if you're going to do that. Aiden Fry, by 35 years as a college head coach, chasing 18-year-olds around recruiting and then teaching them while they're out here. Great teacher he is. 18 right here at Iowa. 18 years. And all time on the win list. Over 200 career wins. 214. Wow. 
Well, Monday night, Al Michaels hosts an action-packed, heart-stopping primetime special showcasing the greatest sports moments of all time. And Jim Kelly and the Buffalo Bills, they go to Three River Stadium to take on the Pittsburgh Steelers on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. That is all Monday night right here on ABC. And last week, the dominance of Green Bay up at Lambeau Field. That was a great scene, though, wasn't it? Oh, how good is Brett Favre? Yeah. Just has the touch, the zip when he needs it, so composed, makes very few mistakes. What in the Super Bowl you think this year? They've got a shot for the first time in a long time. Talented club. My first time at the, how about the 47? Up in the air, but the has got it. At the 35 of Iowa State and a first down. That takes care of the, the timeout and the mistake on the last play. And Mike calmed down Hayden Fry. Yep. Matt Hayden. says, how about it? Hey, take a look at Timmy, Timmy Dwight. He's the guy in the uh, number two receiver inside. He's the guy that has most of the field to work with and is always the most dangerous receiver is the second guy in. So Dwight takes the out pattern, and Dewan Anderson makes the, the stop there, but he ran a nice route, made sure he had the catch. 46 receptions and 816 yards a year ago. And now again, Sherman directing traffic gets the playoff, though. Goes out to Banks. Fights his way to the 37. They lost a couple. Nice play by Damon Gibson, the wide receiver. Came back and on the fullback block got a cut off a man, really allowed to about five more yards. Jack Mitchell made the tackle. Here's a guy, backup defensive end, a redshirt freshman out of Torrance, California. One of those guys, though, that the coaches really think is going to be a player. A lot of speed, just inexperienced right now. As is much of this defense. Seven new starters defensively for Iowa State. And a redshirt freshman and uh, sophomores, especially up front. Play clock running down. They get it off for about two seconds left. Complete inside the 30 with a 28 yard line. Well, they've been impressive not only on the ground with Pavey and Banks, but also in the air. That's Demo Odoms making that catch. The senior out of Austin, Texas. LBJ High School was in the same backfield as Cedric Shawn High School. They were picking on uh, Duan Anderson, number 14. It was just a slant pattern, but it was well thrown, timing kept pattern, and uh, that'll bring up third down. This is a big third down for Iowa State. Time starting to melt away on him with 130 left in the third. 415 total yards, not bad. And we are still in the third. Third down and two. Banks to the outside. Has the first down, may have the touchdown. Wow. He does. The burst of speed from Pavey and Banks. What an afternoon he's had. Third touchdown of the afternoon. This one, a 28-yard run to the corner of the end zone. Too many breakdowns defensively. Number one, the containment man went too wide. Then there's nobody to fill. You see number 11 there? That's Derek Clark, who actually came up inside and ran himself out of the play. Banks kicked it to the outside. There was nobody there, and he took it all the way for the touchdown. Good run by Tavian Banks. Tavian gets his third touchdown of the day, but the defense breaking down, making too many mistakes. That's youth. 154 yards on the afternoon for Tavian Banks. Pretty good one-two combo with uh, Cedric Shaw, I would say, huh? Boy, is that ever true. The kind of backs that when they see a defensive mistake, they can make you pay for it. 38-13, to 13, the Hawkeyes with the lead. A minute 14 left into third. But a man who has not been able to be stopped all afternoon. It's number 11, middle right hand of your screen, comes inside and runs himself out of the play by doing that, rather than forcing the play back in and taking the, the proper angle. And then there's no cornerback on that side. Everybody got sucked into the middle. Banks kicked it outside, breakdown defensively, and Tavian Banks has his third touchdown. Well, coaches will look at this game tape in the Big Ten and say, who the heck do we key on now? At least you could say, well, Sherman can throw it and Shaw can run it. And now you've got Banks and Shaw. Banks doing all of it today. 
Shaw a little bit banged up out with the uh, with the ankle. Really an impressive club. I mean, top to bottom, offensively and defensively. We're talking about the offense because they just scored again. And you look at that offensive line, it's talented. You know, they had some concerns early on, but I think those concerns have been answered. You've got good skill people on the outside, and then with Shaw and Banks, I mean, this has been fantastic for Iowa fans. I mean, they are a talented ball club, and I think everybody was concerned when they were picked number one in the conference early in the preseason. And they said, wait a minute, that's not where we want to be. We're going to sneak up on some people. <laughs> want to get happen. Want to get a Rose Bowl ring, but uh, they're talented. Don't forget, if time permits, stay tuned for the thrifty Carano postgame report. We'll have scores and highlights from across the country after this one, if time permits. Boy, Iowa started 5-0 last year, lost four in a row, finished strongly, though, with the win in the bowl game. But all the playmakers are back, and they're, they're making it play. Davis building Hurley's kick, bringing it back out to about the 29-yard line. Return of 19 yards by Troy Davis. Well, Terry, let's see how Iowa State responds now. I say that because Dan McCartney's had the kids playing hard, even after they've had some mistakes. They were down big at the half. Came back, they were still playing hard in the second half. We'll see if they can continue to do that now, down 38 to 13. Now, Troy Davis with 139 yards on the afternoon, but Tavian Banks for Iowa, 154. You know, some people look and say, how can a guy that runs for 2,000 yards not win the Heisman? He's the first guy in college football history never to win the Heisman after running for 2,000 yards. And part of that is he's playing for a weak team. The play action. Complete to Darren Davis. And the spin again to the outside. He loves that move. Up to the 44, run out of bounds. That was Matt Hughes who ran him into the bench. Think of guys that have won the Heisman Trophy. Almost all of them have come from uh, from winning teams, maybe except for Paul Horning. His team was, right. had a losing Dame. year, but it was Notre Dame. Right. If you play for Notre Dame, uh, and I don't know what other school, uh, you, you could maybe do that. I'm not sure it could be done anywhere else. And even though uh, he had an incredible year last year, I think you're right. There's no way a team that goes 3-8 and is going to have a Heisman Trophy winner on its team. The 35-yard line is Doxon. John Ortley. How quick was that? Nobody picked him up. There was Reeves was in there too, Timmy. Yeah, there was hesitation. If you watch Doxon, he hesitated. It looked like there was a broken play for a while. Maybe Troy Davis surprised him. Watch this. Troy Davis goes to the left of your screen. Now watch. Boom. Here it is. Now it's almost like a hesitation there. And that gives Ortley time to chase him down. Boy, you just can't do that. These guys aren't even, they're just coming through the gaps now. They're shading to the inside using strength moves. Or leave a former walk-on. Well, second and 17 now in the 36. Doxon, the throw incomplete. The intended receiver is Tom Ratke. Tom Knight on the coverage. And that will bring up third down and 17. Now, Tom Knight, Timmy, really the leader of this defense. Uh, maybe more respect than anyone else on this defensive team. A guy who has seven career interceptions and four last year. But uh, when they get in the huddle and he says something, everyone listens. Yeah, he played as a true freshman. Now he's a senior. A little bit injury play. He's had some bad knees, but uh, you're right. They love him. Seven career interceptions. And as you said, he's highly respected. And in motion now on the roll is Doxon. As time overthrows Williams, the intended receiver at midfield. And let's check in with John Saunders in New York one more time. John? Got your airtime, John. Hopefully we'll uh, hear from you throughout the rest of this game. Final second to the third quarter. Winding down and Banks with the fair catch. At the 36, he's hit, but it looked like it was incidental contact. Yeah, he tried to avoid it. It's his responsibility to avoid the contact and he he tried to avoid it well, that was the 10th punt of the afternoon for mark harris and that one a 39 yard punt but he's getting a lot of work iowa state has not made a third down play all day have not made a conversion they're 0 for 10. wow not going to win many games when you're doing that now this is a program though that did not win a game a couple of years ago and mccarney 
comes on. They go three and eight last year, so obviously improvement. And looking for improvement, not only in the win-loss column, but also in different areas. There's Ryan Driscoll back in at quarterback. Got some action in the first half of Iowa. And not a lot of optimism. And that's the end of the third quarter. And, and the fourth quarter is always Iowa State's worst. Yep. Well, we're back with more between Iowa State and Iowa after this message and a word from our ABC stations, 38 to 13 Hawkeyes. Fourth quarter about to begin here in Iowa City. Terry Gannon, Tim Brandt, Lewis Johnson, who is down on the field. Second and eight for Iowa. As Dan McCartney looks on here in the final quarter, his team down big at Kinnick Stadium. Driscoll over the middle. That's picked off by Tracy Williams, a strong safety. And lays it on the turf. Iowa has it back at the 24-yard line. Do you believe it? And they signal Iowa State ball, but he's got to be wrong. Unbelievable. When things go wrong, they go wrong. Even Hayden's laughing. Tracy Williams had an interception last week, and now he picks one off again, but he fumbles it right back to Iowa. Well, if you watch this, I mean, he just throws into coverage and he throws behind his receiver to make matters worse. Now, here's the, the ironic part. Iowa State finally gets the turnover, and they turned all those turnovers last week into points, but here they just give it right back. Hey, you think Banks might be player of the game? He just caused the fumble and covered it. And I'll tell you this, if he scores again today, he's going to have a new record here at Iowa. Yeah, he'll tie the record, right, for most points scored with 24. There he goes. No room this time, though. Back to the line of scrimmage. And Iowa State saying they have the football, and they do. Banks arguing, but Derek Clark came up with it. Well, you really have to admire the way Iowa State, even though they're being pummeled here, 38 to 13, not giving up. I mean, McCartney's got these kids playing hard. Yep. And with a lot of emotion as well. Damian Banks getting a little bit sloppy with the ball, changes hands, but watch as he comes in, he gets it knocked out from behind and just stripped. The pressure was from, from behind, and then they just knocked it out of there. Big turnover for Iowa State. So Iowa State takes over at the 23. Coming here and Davis in the backfield. Here's Troy. Looking for a lane. He's got one. He lays it on the turf. Unbelievable. And it goes back to the Hawkeyes. Nobody can hang on to the football. I don't want to. You can have it. Being played the last three plays from scrimmage. Talented running back. He doesn't put the ball on the ground very often, but here he thinks he breaks it. Once he gets through the seam, now he's changing his gait, his stride, and when he does that, the ball just pops loose. Tom Knight hit him and popped it loose. You also have to wonder now in the fourth quarter, fatigue becoming a factor maybe for these guys. Uh -huh. Certainly with a lopsided score, your concentration breaks down a little bit. Well, the heat and humidity not a problem, though. It is gorgeous this afternoon. 64 degrees, almost no wind, just a light breeze. Ryan Driscoll back in at quarterback for Iowa. First and 10 at the 10. Banks bounces outside, gets back to the line. That's about it. Get another turnover here. We could have a record on turnovers. <laughs> Jack Mitchell made the tackle. You know, that's the one thing I think that Hayden Fry maybe can walk away and, and really stress to his team in a negative way. You know, he's got to be pleased with the way most things have gone. But the mistakes and turnovers and the way they have a number of times let the play clock run down and had to call timeout. Like they used all three in the second half already. Second and ten. Driscoll on the play action. Throws out. He's got his man, Willock, at the 36-yard line. And a first down, Richard Willock. The junior out of Chicago with a catch. A gain of 26 on the play. Now that ball didn't have the velocity. It didn't have the spiral that you'd see on a lot of quarterbacks. But Matt Sherman did just what he had to. He put it there. It was a soft zone. Richard Willock 
got into the open seam, and Driscoll hit him. Did I say Sherman? I meant Driscoll. Lemister in at tight end, now in motion. He leads the way for Banks, bouncing outside, a lot of room. And up to the 47, but there's a flag back at the 40. Terry, when you look at the roster of this Iowa football program, and it is a talented, talented team and, and an excellent program, kids are from all over. Hayden Fry mm -hmm. has great success recruiting kids from Florida as far as Alaska and Wisconsin and, and uh, Colorado, and he brings them all in here to Iowa. Iowa City is a very attractive college town that uh, I think would be it'd be fun to go to school here. I think most people around the country, as we see the hold and it's backing up Iowa, would be really surprised if they haven't been to Iowa City to come here and, and realize how cosmopolitan it is, how many things there, there are to do here in Iowa City. And it's very safe. And the people here could not be nicer. Walked around the little pedestrian mall this morning. About 43 degrees <laughs> early this morning here. I'll tell you this, though. The Midtown Family Restaurant sent us one of the biggest sandwiches at halftime I've ever seen. <laughs> and you, you took care of most of it. He's huh? just gone to play action. Throws this one away. I think they may have been setting up a little screen to Granquist, the fullback. There's Chris Knipper, the tight end. And right now, Lewis Johnson with a special guest down on the sideline. Lewis, who do you have? Hey, listen, I've got P.J. McCartney, the uh, father of Dan McCartney, the Iowa State coach. Look at this. He's traded in his Hawkeye sweatshirt for a Cyclone sweatshirt. Quite a different thing for you. First of all, quickly, tell me, what is it like to see your son out here coaching Division I football? Greatest experience in my life. Nobody could be any more proud than what I am. But I'm honest to God, I watched him from junior high, high school, college, and now he's here. Now he's close. And he's doing a good job of it. Let's catch this play right okay. quick, Terry. Second and 21 on the 26. Driscoll throws it away. He had Emo Odoms, and uh, he didn't look for the football. Let's go back down to Lewis. Sir, many years you were here as a police officer. You were the, the, the police chief. You stood on these sidelines with the, with the uh, Hawkeyes for many years. How, is it difficult to be a Cyclone now? Is that something that's been tough to do? Well, the, the only thing there, it was a professional move for him. It wasn't easy for him, for his mother or I at the time. We shed some tears, yeah. but he's there, and we think he's in the right place. And I'm silly enough to think he's going to turn that around. They're gonna, <laughs> they need another year. They need a little more muscle. They need a little more experience. But they're going to do it. All there is. Thanks so much for joining us. Enjoy the game. Thank you. Have a hot dog for me up there. Huh? I'll do it. Hey, I'll tell you, Lewis, I don't think he's silly at all. I think he's right. I think he will turn that program around. Maybe he banks another carry out to the 34 with a proud papa. Yeah, you can just tell. But you know what? If you look at Dan McCarney, he's right. I mean, he's helped turn the programs around at both Iowa and Wisconsin. Now he's doing it at Iowa State. The Cyclones are going to get better. They're going to get stronger. He's organized. He's intelligent. He's a great motivator. They've got that new $10.5 million facility there with a new weight room. Yep. He is going to turn the program around. Which is a big part of recruiting these days, those facilities and the upgrade. I mean, that's, that's a big help to his recruiting efforts. Darren Davis got hit, but still on his feet. Fighting his way out to the 40 and knocked out of bounds at the 42-yard line. The punt of 41 yards and a return of 17, 38 to 13, Iowa. Still a long way to go in this one, 12-13, and Iowa State taking over at the 42-yard line. Armentier and Troy Davis in the backfield. And that is Darren Davis, actually, in a big hole to the 45 of Iowa and a first down. Yeah, I told you it was tough to tell those guys apart. You know what's interesting? You were telling the story about Troy Davis and how he came to school and was a little bit homesick and, and how he, you know, he cried for a while. Just like a big brother says, hey, come on out and join me. And his brother came out, two talented running backs. Well, you know, it was Darren who said after a while, he was still back in Miami, he said, don't call anymore crying. <laughs> Grow up and be a man and stay there. And he did, obviously. And uh, a year later, Darren joins him. On first down, that's Green with the catch at the 40. And big yardage inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. Plus Atkins on the coverage and the tackle. And let's go up to John Saunders for an update on Washington. John? Thanks, John. That's impressive over that BYU team. BYU team would be Texas a &M over. Yeah. First down at the 29, here's Dan Davis. Cuts back to the inside, fights his way down to the 22. 
Vernon Rollins made the stop, but good yardage again for the younger Davis. I hope nobody makes a mistake and looks at this scoreboard and says, hey, 38 to 13, Iowa State's not very good because they have got some talent. Uh -huh. There is no question they have some talent. Start with the Davis brothers. Second and three at the 22. Darren Davis, the lone setback. And Doxson changing the play at the line. Quick drop, throws out, and complete but short of a first down. Mike Brantley with a catch on a pass that was thrown behind him, but a good tackle by Plez Atkins. Very difficult catch, too. And there's a flag on the play. Tomorrow at 3 Eastern, 2 Central, and Pacific on ABC Sports, Robbie Gordon and 11 of the world's Top drivers meet in Michigan to take the final challenge of the International Race of Champions. Then at 4 Eastern, 3 Central and Pacific, Ari Leyendijk and the stars of the Indy Racing League roll the dice in the desert at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. That's all tomorrow on ABC Sports. This is going to be a personal foul against Iowa, so they'll move it all the way down to the 10-yard line. Actually, almost inside the 10. Just inside the 10 yard line, so it's first and goal now for Iowa State. And it's not like Dan McCartney doesn't have a lot of positive things to take from this ball game and build on. Terry, you're right. I am just so impressed the way this team just keeps playing hard, even though they're down big. Armentier and Davis. Darren Davis in the backfield. They offset the eye. A long count, and here is Darren. Tough going up the middle. May have gained two, possibly three, but that's it. John LaFleur, the junior out of Jefferson, South Dakota, in on the tackle. LaFleur, an interesting guy from South Dakota, and as you said earlier, Timmy, a starter. His father played at Iowa linebacker in the early 70s. He's had some knee problems, and one of the reasons that he is not starting this year, but certainly getting as much playing time as anyone on that defensive front. Second and goal now at the seven. Great drop for Dotson. Running, and not going to get out of there. And the ball was loose for a moment, but he got it back. John LaFleur, the man we just talked about, under pressure, and that's who sent him to the turf. Boy, Doxon looks a lot more comfortable this half, but when they chase him, they come with all kinds of pressure. He just doesn't have much of a chance. He was trying to throw the ball. He's 10 for 22, 114 yards and a touchdown today. LaFleur got there first, and then Doxon hit by Chambers, and the ball on the ground, he had to scramble to get it back. Just see him just whip that ball out. He had his hand on it and actually yanked it out. Grant Brantley to the far side. Green to the near side. Three receiver set. Green pass out of the backfield to Davis. Looking to get inside the five and knock out of bounds there. But he's got to get to the end zone. Iowa State not able to get a first down before the end zone. So trying to push it in any way they can. Plus Atkins on the tackle and a good one. Yeah. Forget any field goal attempt here on fourth down. I mean, you've got to get some points. You've got to go for the touchdown. You just need points in a hurry. Troy Davis has checked back into the ball game. And here they come on fourth down. And here comes the crowd. Darren Davis in the backfield on fourth and goal from the four. Tipped up and incomplete. They'll turn it over on down. That is the third tip ball today. Doxon's only six feet. He's thrown against a very tall defensive line, but he's got to find the alleys to throw in. Well, the defensive stopped by the Hawkeyes down inside the five, and they'll take over there. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Ford Escort. It's new and it's nifty, made for the smart, the intelligent, thrifty. Brewery Fresh Budweiser, who remind you, fresh beer tastes better. And Chili's Grill and Bar, home of the Big Mouth Burgers. 9.07 left 
38 to 13 Iowa and Ryan Driscoll back in at quarterback for Iowa but it's a nice stop there by the defense too you look at the score and uh, you have to dig down deep to try to stop a team inside the five yard line. Michael Berger straight ahead the fullback getting a lot of work today out to maybe the nine yard line. Don Patterson and everybody on that Iowa offense now their thing is to melt the clock. They're not as concerned about scoring as much as getting first downs and just keep the clock rolling. And a long drive last week actually Timmy to uh, to seal that victory up against Arizona. It's a good look at the brain trust up in the uh, the press box. Those guys aren't celebrating with a 38 13 lead. They're still working trying to look at things see what they're doing best see what they, uh, they want to alleviate what they want to add. <laughs> I don't think there's any question about that. Heavy and Banks out to the 10 may have gained a yard. That's it. Kevin Hudson, who has been picked on all afternoon, comes up to make the stop. Good run support, but uh, he has let a couple of receivers go deep on him today. Interesting to watch Iowa State. They run some of that double eagle defense they picked up from Arizona. And Arizona caused some problems for Iowa last week, but not today. That defense uh, caused very few problems. 38 points. Arizona's also been playing it for a number of years, which makes a difference. Here's the burger wrapped up as soon as he got the football and sent back to the six-yard line. Terry Thomas, a redshirt freshman out of Flint, Michigan, there, as soon as he took the handoff. Played his first game last week. And a high school All-American out of Northern High School in Flint. But so brings up fourth down just inside the tent. Aaron Davis back at the 45-yard line of Iowa. And they figure to get good field position after this punt. Nick Gallery with the punt that bounces at the 47 takes an Iowa bounce. And out to midfield, a punt of 42 yards, 7.01 left, and a big lead for the Hawkeyes. football season some of the sights and sounds of our afternoon here in Iowa City great looks all day long from the guys in the truck Jeff Graham our producer and David Kiviet our director Jackson going down right at midfield and Anthony they Holman, have, Brian, have lost Madden, a yard all those guys down there are doing a great job yep Mark Williams our spotter John Madry our statistician up here in the booth excellent job as usual the throw complete out to the 45 yard line as Tyrone Watley with the catch and by the way Ed Williams who we saw earlier I guess in the third quarter take that mean lick he has been out since then but they've got ice on his ribs seems to be okay but he's not coming back this afternoon brings up a third and five at the 45 Doxon straight drop over the middle tipped up in the air and intercepted Brantley the intended receiver and Atkins almost had the interception the Iowa State folks know now with 605 left there's no chance to come back and beat Iowa you hear the old adage the old cliche saying they're playing for pride I'm not sure that's really the case but these guys are playing hard they're playing for Dan Dan McCartney he's turning that program around he wants positives out of this he wants them to get some work done he wants them to try to get this thing going again and I think his kids have done that all day. I mean, even yeah. though they've been beaten up and, and outplayed, I mean, they have never quit. And they're going for it on fourth down again here. Fourth and five. Dotson will go over to Dan McCarney and talk about it. So they'll come back with a fourth down play when we come back to Kinnick Stadium.
6.05 left in this one. A look at Iowa State, their sideline. Obviously not pleased at what's taking place this afternoon, but looking for some positives right now, and it's fourth and five at the 45. Going for it on fourth down. Boxing, running, and won't get there. Needed to get to the 40, in fact, inside the 40, and he is stopped right at the 42-yard line by Mark Mitchell. So you'll see the Iowa offense come back, Terry, and now they'll just melt that last 5.59 off the clock. It's been a great day for the Hawkeyes and a frustrating day for those guys, the Cyclones. Keep in mind, as you look at this schedule, Iowa started 5-0 last year, then lost four, but finished strongly, and all those playmakers are back. But this is, uh, this is what they have in front of them. Yeah, finished 3-0 and won the Sun Bowl over Washington, a big win. But uh, you look later in the season all the way down Northwestern and then Wisconsin, they end up on the road and Minnesota. Yeah, toughest part still in the middle, though, with yeah. Penn State. Yeah. But they look awfully good here. Just with a throw inside of Iowa State territory, and that's Richard Willock. And they'll move the chains. James Elmore on the coverage, but Hawkeye offense looking awfully good. And some of the folks heading home. Got to tell you that Hayden Fry yesterday, he was not happy with his old his old coach, Dan McCartney, you know, because he felt like uh, Dan betrayed him a little bit by giving some films to the Arizona team. And Arizona did come in here and give him some problems, but uh, I mean, that's commonplace in college football. Teams are allowed to exchange tapes all the time for any game that they're playing. Thanks, fights his way ahead for about three. Yeah, and obviously Dan McCartney taking some of the defensive tips from Arizona as well. You look at Iowa State's schedule down the road, the Big 12 ahead. You know, that game last week against Wyoming was a heartbreaker. It took this, it just took the wind out of their shells. They had the game won. I mean, they had, they had scored 38 points, and it was 38-17 in the fourth quarter, and they lose the thing. So that, that really hurt them. I mean, they, they give up all those points in the fourth quarter and then lose in overtime, and they came in here, and, and they'll lose. And, and you're looking at what they have ahead of them. It doesn't get easier. It's in the top five in terms of schedules yeah. in the country. And uh, when you're trying to rebuild, that's not good. It's, it's a tough way to the catch out to the tight end Flemister who coughed it up again but this time on the bounds and they say he was juggling it the entire way. He ran a hole in it. Well it looked like he had it. And now they're going to talk about it on the sideline. Does it bother you that there are 38 points on the board and they're still throwing the football? the football? See, that doesn't bother me. I mean, if you're on there, these kids want to play. They want to use the entire game plan. They want to get as many points on the board. I've never won one of these. I've never been one of these guys that gets upset or running the score up. You're on the field. You've got to play. You know, you saw Hayden Fry laughing. Part of the reason, because earlier in the football game, is around Flemister. That, now they call it a completion. And he fumbled it out of bounds. Earlier in the game, he caught one and fumbled it. And I know Hayden Fry was saying, hey, why is that any different than this one? Dan McCarty not happy about the reversal of calls. He understands, though. Look at him. He says, okay, if that's what happened, okay. Doesn't have to be happy about it, though. No, that's right. 514 yards of total offense. Well, you can't win many football games if you're giving that up in defense. I mean, last week they gave up 41 points. Here they give up 514 yards and 38 points. Last year they gave up 37 a game. You've got to build your defense before you can turn a program around. And a lot of balance on that offense, too. Here's Banks. Good play on that offense today. Down to the 17-yard line, maybe the 16. What an afternoon he has had. And we came in, obviously, talking about Cedric Shaw, which we should have, a Heisman Trophy candidate, leading rusher in school history. But uh, this man has had a career afternoon. Look at that, 176 yards and 11 yards per carry. And if Tavian taps off or caps off this drive here with a touchdown, he will tie the record. 24 points. Right. Second and one at the 17. Here comes Banks. They're going to work him the rest of the way, but he's wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. And 344 and counting in this one. James Elmore was there to meet Banks. Yeah, I can't. 
This is where we're saying Iowa State doesn't get easier. I mean, you're talking about one of the toughest schedules in the country. Six bowl teams on this schedule this year. Wow. It is it is tough to turn a program around. Here they've got the fourth toughest schedule in the country, and it's, it's tough to turn a program around when you're playing that caliber. Oklahoma, Kansas, and Nebraska. Big 12, not bad, huh? Yeah. That strength conference of schedule is phenomenal. You think you had the best of the Big 8, then you bring in the top teams out of the Southwest. Third and one, Driscoll on the roll. Throwing has a man inside the 10. That's Plumister is tight end, down to the 7, and a first down. He held on to that one. Terry, you mentioned the Big 12. I don't think there are many people in the country that would argue that that is by far the strongest conference right now. I mean, you've got the uh, the Cornhuskers trying to three-peat the defending national champions. Then you've got uh, Kansas, Kansas State, and Colorado all 10-2 last year. Then you've got Texas, Texas A&M, and Texas Tech 9-3. and three. I tend to agree with you, but you're making a lot of Big Ten fans men right now. Well, I understand that. In the state of Iowa. I understand that, but I think... Uh, even Wayne Duke, who's the uh, former commissioner here, we were talking about that this morning. It's, it's tough to beat that right now. First in goal at the six. Hanks can't get outside. Not necessarily that each team is better than the Big Ten. I'm saying overall, top to bottom. I understand, and I tend to agree with you. I think top to bottom it is the strongest in the country. Big Ten has an argument from year to year. The SEC obviously has an argument from year to year, but I think no question this year, including the uh, two-time uh, defending national champions, that the Big 12 is the, the toughest in the land. Rodney Filer now in at fullback, along with Banks. Play action. Driscoll. Looking a lot of time. Throws an incomplete, almost picked off. Derek Clark was there. He almost picked that one off at the goal line. So that'll bring up third down at nine with 154 to play. They're not just running this thing out. They're trying to get to the end zone. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see if they come up on fourth down what they do. And Banks, they split them in the backfield now. Willock to the near side. Owens to the far side. Driscoll rolling to the air. That's a broken up. Nice play. Dewan Anderson broke it up. That's a great time. Just timed his leap perfectly. Came and Gibson, the intended receiver, and he fought him the entire way. Ball was perfectly thrown by Driscoll. He put it up for grabs. Anderson had good position. Well, could have very easily been caught, though. It was a nice play by Iowa and good defense for Iowa State. Now you've got fourth and goal at the nine. You got your answer. Driscoll on the field, and they are going to go for it. Richard Carter now in at wideout as well. Play clock running down. Just got the play off. Banks looking for room to the two-yard line, so he won't get there, and the Iowa State defense holds. Now, don't forget about next week, the great lineup of college football on ABC Sports. Starts at noon Eastern with, this is a heck of a matchup, number nine, Notre Dame taking on number seven, Texas, biggest game in a long time down in Texas, and then at 3.30 Eastern, Boston College taking on Michigan, and there's other action as well. May have some available on pay-per-view, so call your local cable operator for those games next Saturday. Another great lineup on ABC Sports. Of course, we'll see two more good running backs next week, Leon Johnson and C.J. Williams, yeah. Atlanta Coast Conference. Seems like Leon Johnson has been at North Carolina for eight years. <laughs> you know, out of the top 25 running backs in the country, six of them are in the ACC this year. Start with work done out of Florida State, the Heisman Trophy candidate there. Aaron Davis straight ahead, fights his way to the six-yard line. I talked about work done earlier that he may not have the strength. I made that point of a Troy Davis. But I'll tell you what, you just can't find that guy on the field. He just darts in and out. He's got unbelievable speed, hides behind his blockers, and had a chance to go to the NFL this year, but came back. Wanted to set an example for uh, his five brothers and sisters who were at home in Baton Rouge. And since his mother was killed a senior year of high school, he's helped raise those kids. 
Davis bouncing outside across the 10 to the 12. Tom Knight, the cornerback on the hit. Just under a minute left here in Iowa City. Third and one from the 12. And they're throwing. And this one's picked up. Damian Rutgers on the interception. Brings it back to the 14-yard line in Iowa with 42 seconds left. Again, deep inside Iowa State territory. You know, we've talked a lot about Dan McCartney today, but how about Hayden Fry? Has to feel good about his ball club. They've played solidly offensively and defensively. Defensively, I think they have just been sensational. Damian Robinson, five interceptions last year, just behind Wes Atkins, who had six and led Iowa and the Big Ten. Hayden Fry giving his skilled people the last uh, bit of information before they go out. Call off the dogs or keep banging it in? Yeah, it doesn't look like they're calling them off here. No, maybe so. They run to the outside of Doug Miller. Freshman out of Mount Pleasant, Iowa on the carry. And he's taking a little turf home with him, too. Hood ornament for his helmet. Looks like a chia pet. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like what you got me for Christmas last year, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Ten seconds That's of telling it. on this one. Closing it out here in Iowa City. And an impressive win by the Hawkeyes. Hayden Fry and his team. 38 to 13, so they extend the string of 14 straight years of Iowa State. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game, Troy Davis and Tammy and Banks Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. It's been a Chevrolet tradition for more than a quarter of a century. And great days by Davis and by Banks. So the final score from Kinnick Stadium, Iowa, with the 38 to 13 win in a rivalry that began in 1894 and has been dominated lately by the Hawkeyes. Hey, if you missed the score, log on to College Football Today live on AOL, keyword ABC Sports. For Tim Brandt and Lewis Johnson, I'm Terry Gannon. So long from Iowa City.